Welcome back to another stream. Hey everyone, how are you guys doing? I think this has been quite a, an exciting week. Ah, I just can't wait to dive into the topic. We have some new product announcements from OM Digital Solutions. But hey, I want to drink my coffee first. Here you go, just gonna show off the L Lens, White Lens mug filled with hot coffee. Mmm. Alright, I'm gonna say hi to some people first. I see there's like, wow, there's a lot of you here already. Ryan, hi Ryan, how are you? Nice to see you here. Squidat, very good to see you again. Terry, Terry says hi from sunny UK. How are you Terry? Very, very happy to see you here. Anthony is diving straight into the topic as usual. No hi, no hello Robin, just say the main thing I see that's new with this camera is that it has been rebranded to mean that does not justify the 400 Canadian dollars increase in cost over the current 2 euro OM1. Yeah, we'll get to the pricing of the camera, whether it's worth paying for or not. Of course, guys, feel free to write in the comments what you think of the OM1 Mark II. Are you impressed with the camera? Uh, or are there things that you're not happy with, the, the latest announcement or latest flagship? Yeah, do let me know. We'll talk about this very, very, very soon. Klaus says, hello, Robin from Switzerland. Hey, Klaus, very nice to see you here. Forever and Amateur says, hello, hey, how are you? Fernando says, hi from Barcelona. Hey, Fernando, very nice to see you here. Pavel says, right, the name OM Systems looks horrible. Not worth paying for it. Oh, let's not name shame right from the start. Hey, I mean, they can't use the, the name Olympus anymore. So, you know, it's at the end of their agreement terms. Something has to change, right? Yeah, Xmida says they could have at least integrated some nice speed booster in the large full frame OM Sigma 150 to 600, then it'll be more interesting or use it as drop in unit. But Xmida, we are talking about OM1 Mark II. That's the topic of this stream, right? So yeah, let's stay on topic because if we keep talking about the other stuff and then the next thing we talk about full frame and then medium format and then film cameras and then we have Leica and then we have like Cosina and Pentax and yeah, things will just get out of hand. So yeah, we have a super chat already this early on. Hey Karas, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate the support. Yeah, guys, if you don't know this already, any, any contribution, big or small, from you guys will definitely keep me going. And I do love making content here. I want to share as much as I can. I've been enjoying myself using my YouTube as my platform to share about photography, to share about my passion, and to just talk about photography with you guys. And I love doing it so much. And if you guys love it as well, if you have learned something from me, yeah, I would really appreciate uh, the super chat or buy me coffee or paper contribution. And and you guys have helped me a lot. I really appreciate it. So thank you so much, Car Ass. I'm gonna say hi to a few more people. Arthur says, hello everyone, greetings from Poland. Hey Arthur, very nice to see you here. Thanks for dropping by. Squared Up says, I just learned that one of my micro four thirds cameras has live view composite last night. I took terrible photos because I need to shoot in a less urban area. Was it because of light pollution? Because of all the street lights and the building lights that cause some reflection in the sky. That's why you can't get a clear sky, right? Light pollution is a real problem. Eddie says, good morning. Hey, Eddie. Well, good evening to you from here. <laughs> Andrew is agreeing with Pavel. Yeah, it's hardly inspired. Yeah. Hi, Andrew. <laughs> Very nice to see you here. Skoda says, good morning from Orlando. Good morning to you. Jeff Painter. Hey, Jeff. Very nice to see you here. Hi, Robin, everyone. Greetings from the UK. Very nice to see you, Jeff. Wolfie says, finally, I'm just in time to float with the clouds of Robin. Hey, Wolfie. Very nice to see you here. Oh, we have another super chat from Bastion. Congrats on the 75,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, Bastion. That was the first topic I'm going to talk about. But uh, before we get to that, um, yeah, I just want to say hi to more people. But seriously, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Bastion. And all these contributions, they mean so much to me. Uh, as you know, I'm a solo content creator. I find 
fund all my videos with my own money and some of them do cost quite a bit and I don't mind doing it because hey I enjoy doing them and I love sharing as much as I can like if you have followed me over the years whether it's from my blog I still have my blog which I actively write and share my photographs and of course on this YouTube channel I share everything and I don't hold back every single camera settings techniques how I see things the thought process that went into my mind I share every single thing from start to finish on how I get my shots so yeah if you guys found this beneficial I really I, I'm really glad to see that some of you do find them helpful and I inspired some of you to go out and shoot more and that's all I want to do right if you guys can pick up the camera go out and shoot I'll be very happy so thank you so much for the contribution thank you so much Bastian I appreciate that Massimo says, good morning from Venice. Good morning, Massimo. How are you? Pavel says, I bought the first OM-1 enjoying the fact that it had an old name. Yeah, the OM-1 had the Olympus on it, right? <laughs> Anthony says, not willing to pay an extra 400 Canadian for just a firmware update. If there are genuine hardware improvements over the 2-year-old OM-1, I have no problem with the price increase. Yeah, but then that's the, the truth that's that cannot be escaped, right? The price will just go higher. It will never come down, regardless of whether there will be improvements or not. Like every single generation, the cameras are just going to get more and more expensive, right? Andrew is talking to Squeda. Live composite has many interesting uses. It's great for light painting. That's true. I love using it for star trails, though. Like leave it on for 45 minutes or one hour and let like the sky spin. Well, technically, it's the earth that's spinning and you get like the trail over the sky. It's just so beautiful. Ken says, good afternoon, Robin, from Northern Ireland. Well, good evening to you from here. It is like after 10 o'clock here. Esmida, hi again. Hey, Esmida. <laughs> Andrew says, hello, Robin. Hello, Andrew. Robin says, good day, Robin. Love your work. No worries. I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I'm able to talk to you guys. And I'm very thankful that you guys are here. So, yeah. Thank you to all of you. Tony says, hi, Robin. Hey, Tony. Nice to see you here again. Yumi says, hello, Robin. Hey, Yumi. Exciting news indeed. Hope you are good. I'm good. I'm doing really, really well. Xavier says, hi from El Salvador. Just got the Micro Four Thirds EPL-8 because of you. And I'm loving it. Oh, I'm glad that you have the EPL-8. I think it's Olympus Pen Light. That is an excellent camera and you can do a lot with it. So do bring it out to shoot more and I'm sure you're going to get some fantastic shots. John says, good morning, everyone from Rhode Island, USA. Good morning, John. How are you? Squada says, as long as OM system keep making quality cameras, I don't care what they call themselves. I have a Panasonic Lumix and that isn't really the best name. We just got used to it. Yeah, that's true. Hey, what we want is quality products and that is the most important thing. I wish that they give us just that, right? Ed Duffy says, good day, Robin. Ed from Japan. Hey, Ed, how are you? Very nice to see you here. Praveen says, hi, Robin. Do you have any insights on the collaboration between Olympus and Sigma? This day, seeing about the 75 made by Sigma. Uh, well, Sigma has been collaborating with everyone, not just Olympus, right? They are the third-party lens manufacturer. They make lenses for Sony, Canon, Nikon, and some of them are being rebatched. It's not just Olympus, right? Now, Pavel says, on the first OM-1, there is a problem with autofocus. It really sucks in low light. This is the only thing I have a problem with. Yes, I have reported about the same problem that you have just mentioned. I've made three videos to talk about it. A lot of people came in to dismiss what I... Uh, about my complaint on the autofocus in low contrast and low light. It's just not just low light, but low contrast as well. Uh, but then again, in the, in the videos, if you look at the comments, we have like hundreds and hundreds of people who also face the same problem. They say that the EM1 Mark II, EM1 X, EM1 Mark III, the older cameras has better, they, they all have better and more efficient and reliable single autofocus in low contrast, low light situations. And that's very disappointing. I don't think they have fixed this in the OM1 Mark II. Henning says, hello Robin, greetings from good old Germany. I know you call us as viewers amazing, but I really want to say thank you for your consistent and great videos and streams. Really enjoy the content. Oh, you are too kind. And I really appreciate you being here because if no one is watching this, it is pointless. Right? I'm just talking to myself. So it's you guys that actually made this channel meaningful. So thank you so much, Henning. Bastin says, congrats to the 75,000 subs. Yep, we're going to talk a little bit about that very, very soon. Abby says, hello everyone, have fun. Hey, how are you, Abby? 
Fanatic says, Robin, your video helped me a lot. Thank you. No worries. And thank you so much for being here and thank you for letting me know. All right, before we go too far, I see like we do have quite a long list of comments coming in, but I just want to get the stream started. And the first thing I want to talk about is that we have just hit 75,000 subscribers and I am so stoked. I, I just couldn't believe it, right? Like, I started this YouTube channel about three to four years, four years ago. And when I started the channel, I did not have many expectations. I just wanted to have a place to talk with people, to share my photography work, to share my passion. And I want to learn a few skills along the way, like how to record a video, how to create content, edit video. And these are important skills to, to pick up. And along the way, my goodness, I've made so many friends throughout the whole world. It's opened out so much opportunities for me and the channel has grown over the years i just cannot imagine right like if you have told me that robin one day you'll hit 100,000 subscribers i'll tell you you are crazy <laughs> because like seriously i'm just doing this you know honestly for fun right i am a full-time photographer i don't earn much from youtube yes the youtube does give me some income a little bit of income but that's my secondary income my main income is i am a working photographer i shoot for clients i charge them they pay me that's how i pay my bills that's how i feed myself right and youtube is secondary income so having said that the youtube I shouldn't be putting so much effort in it, but I put so much effort in it anyways over the years because I just love doing it so much. And, I, and because you guys kept coming back and it's all thanks to you guys. You guys subscribed, watched my videos, kept me going. You guys commented. I just have you guys to thank for, for me reaching 75,000 subscribers. Like I said, if you told me years ago that I'm gonna hit 100,000 100, uh, subscribers count, I'll tell you that's insane, but now that we are at 75,000, it seems like 100,000 is not impossible. It seems like, hey, we are getting very close. <laughs> so yeah, I am so happy about that. And um, yeah, I celebrated with some friends, went out and uh, had some good food. I bought, I treated myself to a pair of headphones and yeah. And you know what? No, this is not gonna stop. I'm here, I'm not going anywhere, I'm gonna to continue to shoot, I'm gonna to continue to share as much as I can on this channel, I'm going to continue to create content, share tips and tricks on photography, I'm gonna continue on with my shuttle therapy, this channel goes on, and it's all because you guys are still here, and I appreciate every single one of you. Just a few days ago, I published a video talking about why the modern 50mm lenses, mirrorless lenses, whether it's for like, you know, full frame cameras or any other systems are so large, right? This is an old Nikon 50 f1.8D. Uh, of course, in that video, I was using the 1.4D instead. It was my friend Jackie's lens. I've returned the lens to him and got back mine. We swapped lenses for a while. And yeah, the lens is so small. I just couldn't understand why they're so big. So it was a POV style video. I shared some fresh photographs taken from the street. Uh, do check out the video if you have not done so. I thought it was quite a fun video. It's always fun shooting strangers on the street. I show you how I get the shots. Uh, I approach strangers. I took portraits of them and I showed them the photographs. It was all fun. And I think I got some really cool shots in, in that particular video. And of course, just a few days ago, I think it was Sunday, I was live on Rob Track's channel together with some really awesome content creators as well. All the big names out there. We have Mati Sulanto, we have Peter Forsgaard, we have Benjamin Chappell from the Narrowband uh, channel. And we also have Brian James from That Micro Four Thirds Guy. And the awesome road track, I think he did a fantastic job getting everyone together, coordinating the stream, asking all the difficult questions. <laughs> and I thought we the, the, the cool thing about this particular stream was a lot of the discussion were mostly on non-gear topics. Like we talk about composition, we talk about lighting, we talk about capturing the moments, ca importance of capturing memories, storytelling. We talk about a lot of things that is not just about cameras, technicalities, or gear obsession. We share a lot of things about the th what's more important in photography for everyone and how to improve photography. So if you have not checked out the stream, do go to Rob Track's channel and check it out. I think it's really, really, really fun. We have another super chat. And it's from Entrick. Hey Entrick, how are you? 
Thank you so much for Super Chat. And Trick is like contributing to Super Chats every single week. Thank you so much, and Trick. I appreciate you so much. And all these contributions from you guys through the Super Chat, buy me coffee or direct contribution to PayPal, they enable me to improve my video quality. They enable me, enable me to continue making more videos and share with you guys. And I just like every free time that I have, I, of course, I can't make videos every single day. I can't just go out and make videos and do nothing, right? I do have uh, shoots, I have photography jobs, I have clients that I need to shoot for, I have to edit the photos and deliver to my clients. But on my free days, I do spend like two to three days every week to just to make videos on this channel. That's how I grew the channel to what it is today. It's 75,000 subscribers. That's the consistency is the key, right? And because I've been making videos non-stop for the past four years, it did cost me a lot of time, not just time, but also money. And your contribution helped me to recover some of those lost funds, and that will definitely enable me to keep going. So thank you so much, and Trick, I appreciate you so much. We were just talking about the live stream that I was on Rob Track's channel last Sunday. This coming Sunday on the 4th of February, Rob Track has another live stream with a different group of photographers photographers and I think it's a, a fantastic move on Rob's part to separate the streams into two sessions part one and part two uh, because if you have like 10 photographers in one stream that's just too many people now in the second stream we have some of my favorite YouTubers and photographers out there. There's Jimmy Chang. I love Jimmy. I love his work. I think he has some fantastic portraits. I also follow his live streams every week. And we have Microphone Nerds. Emily from UK. I think she's a fantastic YouTuber. I love her videos. I love that she plays with fun, small, colorful cameras. And these are the people that I want to see uh, going live together with, with Rob. My only complaint is that Rob is lumping three female YouTubers together in this part too. I wish he would have balanced the male and female energy a little bit better, like maybe, maybe port over one female over to last week's stream. That would have been awesome, right? Like we have all the male dominant energy in the previous stream. It's not, not all bad. I, I enjoyed the stream thoroughly. I love interacting with all the other YouTubers. Some of them have become my friends. Just like, I wish we have like one or two females around. That would have been really awesome. But anyways, I look forward to this particular stream. Again, uh, do go to Rob Track's channel. Make sure you hit the notification. Uh, enable the notification. And once it goes live, I will be in the stream, not appearing on screen, but I'll be in the chat session. And so if you have questions for me, I'll be there as well, supporting everyone. All right, let's uh, come back to the chat <laughs> wait we have i'm i'm way uh, behind the stream but i need some coffee before i catch up on the on the on the streams hmm. all right let's see who we have we have pavel Pavel says, Panasonic Lumi sounds okay. Nothing as bad as OM systems. <laughs> I am not going to comment on how good or how bad the name sounds. It is what it is. Um, it's also not for us to change. We just have to live with it, right? Unfortunately. Good Vibes says, hey, happy to be here. Hey, Good Vibes. Thanks for being here. Happy to see you. Robin says, 4K 120p would have been nice. I know, right? Like Panasonic can do it. So why can't OM Digital Solutions, right? Like I understand they don't have it in an OM. M1 Mark 1, but like now we have the Mark 2, having that addition would have swayed a lot of people over to the OM1 Mark 2 instead of going for the G9 Mark 2 because G9 Mark 2 has 4K 120p. Jeremy says, hello from Milwaukee. Hey Jeremy, how are you? Very nice to see you here. Anthony says, it looks like the new Nikon Z6 Mark III that everyone's waiting for body only in Canada is going to be close to 4,000 Canadian dollars. I guess everything is going up in price, yes. Inflation is inevitable, it's just gonna happen. All the cameras are just gonna get more and more and more expensive from now onward, and that's just crazy, right? Pavel says, it just does not make sense. What is OM? Why not to have a real name? OM is a real name. OM stands for Olympus Maitani. And that is a real history from Olympus. It is a real heritage. It draws inspiration from their very successful legendary camera line called the OM series SLR. So it started with OM1, OM2, and their lead engineer at that time, Maitani, who is a legend and complete genius. He's the one that's behind the Pan F. He's the one that's behind the OM's uh, cameras. High, highly successful 
hugely, hugely selling out everywhere, all these cameras. And it was due to this, this branding, the OM, that they took it out now and they just add the word system to it. OM system or OM digital solutions, right? Although I know once you add digital solutions or once you add systems to the OM, it doesn't sound as beautiful as it is. But I will argue that OM, that OM, is extremely important and I feel that once I look at it, it means something important to me and to a lot of people as well. Uh, just because you don't know what it means, just because you don't know the history, doesn't mean that OM is meaningless, okay? Steve says, hello from Atlanta. Hey Steve, how are you? Very nice to see you here. Robin says, auto hyperfocal setting would be nice. Just change the manual and just turn it all the way to infinity. Like, how difficult is that? Stewart says, one good thing about the OM1 Mark II, the original OM1 is cheaper now and there will be a lot on the second-hand market. Yeah, that's true. Hey, if you don't need all these, uh, all the upgrades that you see in the OM1 Mark II, you can always go for the OM1 original, right? Car says, do I get to sell my tripod now? No. You still need your tripod for live composite. You still need your tripod for a lot of things, right? Like even the uh, high-res shot, there's a tripod mode which works a lot more efficiently, gives you much better result than handheld tripod mode. If you're shooting non-stationary, uh, sorry, non-moving subjects, right? Stationary subjects. Cyclophob says, I always stick the name on, the, on anyway, old habit. So you mean that you cover the name with a black tape, like the what the journalists used to do? Is that what you're saying? Michael, hey, how are you? Good evening from Thailand. Very nice to see you here, Michael. Yeah, Arshikin says, what's up, Robin? Hey, Arshikin, very nice to see you here. I got hungry seeing some nasi goreng. Yeah, me goreng. Me goreng, me Maggie goreng. That's what I had for dinner. It was delicious. Jerry Hukari says, hi from Finland. Hey, Jerry, how are you? I've watched all images taken with my first digital camera. It says 55 years. 55 years, wow. Nice memories in CD format, yeah. These old cameras, they are quite awesome, right? That's why I'm still looking for some old compact cameras and I still go out and shoot with these compact cameras. I have some content with really old cameras and I can't wait to share with you guys very soon. Robin says, distance to focus point will be nice too. Distance to focus point? There is, um, okay, in a lot of OMD cameras, Olympus uh, EM1 Mark II, since EM1 Mark II, there is a, what do you call that? It's a pre-focusing distance, it's what you have mentioned. You can preset the distance and the focus will actually go there and not surpass that distance. I can't remember the, the exact name for that feature because I seldom use it. There is already that feature, yeah. Good Vibe says, why did OM change name? They didn't change name. OM is OM, right? The is OM, still OM system. Are you saying why did Olympus change name? Well, Olympus is a company and the camera division, well, Olympus is a medical company. There is, uh, they have a uh, medical division, not division, medical company. They have life sciences. They have, you know, even involved in construction. And imaging or camera is just one part of the company. So one day they decided that we are giving up on imaging business. We don't want to sell cameras anymore. So JIP, Japan Industrial Partners, came and carved out the imaging business from Olympus. And because they carved out the business from Olympus, they can't use the word Olympus anymore because it is a different company now. The company belongs to JIP, Japan Industrial Partners. So they have to use a different brand. So instead of using JIP, which I think will sound a lot worse, you don't want your camera to be JIP or M1, right? It will sound really weird. So they threw back to the OM which is Olympus Maitani, which actually makes sense if you ask me. Does that answer your question? Yeah. All right, Andrew is talking to Stuart, no worries. Wolfie says, hello from Somerset, UK. Hey, Wolfie. And then he says, good morning from Canada. <laughs> I like how you just threw all your thoughts first, like, oh, this $400 Canadian more expensive and like, it's not worth the upgrade and everything. Then, hi, Robin. <laughs> Hello to you too, Anthony. Pavel says, anyway, if they fix autofocus in the new camera, it is something. Yeah, they should have, right? They should have. Adrian says, Hello, Robin. Hey, Adrian, how are you? Jamie says, it's not worth the upgrade from the OM1 yet. Yeah. 
Well, that, that is subjective. Some, for some people, it may be worth the upgrade depending on whether you need the features that is in the new camera or not, right? Anthony says, hopefully the autofocus problem shooting uh, poorly in low light with single point uh, is fixed. Same, but I don't think so. If it is, someone will have reported it by now. Larry says, hi Robin from Hong Kong. Your blog helped Micro Four Thirds users a lot. Thank you so much, Larry, and thanks for dropping by. Very happy to see you here. And yes, I try my best to contribute as much as I can and I'm glad that whatever that I have put out there it helped people in some small ways so thank you for letting me know Jeremy says how do you like to brew your coffee well um, nothing fancy like that it's just instant coffee unfortunately I know like I sound like I'm a coffee snob I do go out and drink expensive coffee in cafes and other places some artisan coffees right but at home I just drink like plain simple um, instant coffee <laughs> Hmm. All right. Blue Cough says, good morning from the US. Hey, good morning to you too, Blue Cough. Thanks for dropping by. Tobias says, hello everybody and greetings to you from Germany. Hey Tobias, very nice to see you here. Peter say, free not freeware. All right. Klaus says, from business perspective, it was a cheap approach from OM system for the own new flagship camera yeah it is a cost saving approach right like they don't have to invest too much just to use the same body same internals same sensors same processor just change things a little bit change the name and it they, there you go a new camera right i agree with you klaus archigan says congratulations on the 75,000. they will i uh, will be here till you get that mid nah i don't think i'll reach one million i'll be happy if i reach like 100 150 000, and that's it i'm number is not important to me you guys are more important to me. You guys being here, that matters more, right? It's not the numbers, it's not the quantity, it's the quality. And I enjoy that you guys are here chatting with me and that makes me feel very, how I, how I put it, inspired me, it actually inspired me and motivated me to do more and go on, right? Hesh, I'm Manro. hey, how are you? Hi from the Southern UK. I'm on a couch to the airport on a coach to the airport to fly to India. Wow, all my kit in my carry, OM1, 300 F4, 40 to 150 F2.8, 2 to 40 F2.8, hand carrying EPL7, no way I lug a 150 to 600 around. <laughs> Now that lens is not small, right? And uh, Hesham Manro, have a safe flight to India. And I do hope that you have plenty of amazing photography sessions. And I hope that you capture some fantastic shots from that trip. So do enjoy your trip. Yeah, I can't wait to hear from you again in future streams. Colin says, hi Robin from Washington, UK, the original Washington. <laughs> hey Colin, thanks for dropping by, very nice to see you. Oof says, 3 p.m. Sunday, no snow, windy and 6 degrees here south of Sweden. Oh, 3 p.m. sun, sorry. Nice to see you. Very nice to see you too. Sounds like uh, per the perfect weather to go out and shoot, right? Eddie says, hi Robin, uh, on the EM1 Mark 1, still worth on 2024, of course. Why not? I think it's a fantastic camera. Kyle Richard says, Good evening, Robin. Hope you're well. Hey, Kyle. Very nice to see you here. Yes, I'm doing well. And yeah, we have a lot to talk about. I'm just going to say hi to a few more people. Zoltan. Hey, very nice to see you, Zoltan. Thanks for dropping by. And uh, I see you in a, I see a lot of you guys, Zoltan, Kyle, and a lot of uh, Jeff Painter, HR Monroe. I see you guys in uh, the live stream on Sunday as well, Rock Track. So thank you for dropping by there and here as well. Arshikin says, Good evening to all. Paul says, Hi Robin, I love Olympus, but this upgrade is a huge disappointment. The new 150 to 600 rebranded full frame Sigma lens for double the price of the EOL mount version is even more disappointing. Yeah. We will talk about the lens in a separate stream because um, there is a lot to cover and I do want to talk to everyone. I do want to reply to everyone's questions and comments. So we will just uh, narrow this particular stream down to OM1 Mark II, right? Hey, I'm streaming almost every week, so yeah. We have plenty of chance to, to talk about that lens. Jeff Painter is reminding everyone to click the like button. Thank you so much. Pavel is talking to Hesham Manro, so you guys can talk to each other. Ken Cox says, Robin, do you think that the updates for the OM1 will stop now, now that the OM1 Mark II is here? No, I don't think so. Logically, they shouldn't do that. If they do that, they are just digging their own grave. We will just see what happens after this. I don't think they'll stop. Clint, oops, I'm clicking the wrong button. Wow, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of comments. Okay, where were we? 
Oops, I lost the comment. Give me a moment. Hmm. Give me a moment, give me a moment. Wait a minute, where were we? Yeah, here we are. Clean says, good morning everyone from the Western US. Congratulations, Robin, on creating a great following and providing a place where we can all get together. No worries. And thanks for being here, Clean, and thanks everyone for, for being here. All right, I know there's a lot, a lot of comments uh, from you guys. I will get to everyone, just give me time, but it is already half an hour into the stream. I do want to get the topic uh, started, right? We gotta get the ball rolling. So let's talk about the exciting topic. So, just two days ago, I think it was Tuesday here in Malaysia. Now it's Thursday. Yes, exactly two days ago. OM Digital Solutions announced the OM1 Mark II. Oh, someone sent a super chat. Just got to jump to the super chat first to acknowledge that. Uh, SST says, congratulations on the 75,000 subscriber. I'm a Sony Fuji Nikon shooter, but I always enjoy your videos. Keep my good work. Thank you so much, SST. Thanks for being here, and I appreciate that. Hey, photography is photography. It doesn't matter what camera system you use, and whether it's Sony, Fuji, Olympus, Panasonic, we all enjoy photography the same. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. All right, let's get back to the topic. <laughs> all right, uh, so OM Digital Solutions just launched OM1 Mark II. So this is a new flagship. It has, it's brand new. It has some awesome features. It has some upgrades there in here. It has received some mix reception from the crowd some love that there is uh, some hype from OMD solutions they are doing something but some are complaining that they are not doing enough so that's the topic that we want to cover today are you impressed with this new camera are you wowed by this new flagship uh, model from OM Digital Solutions that's why I want to hear from you guys it's not just about me here talking to everyone but I want to hear your thoughts as well so do let me know in the comments what are your thoughts uh, does it satisfy your needs does it meet your expectations as the next flagship model from OM Digital Solutions right uh, but yeah, but for me at this moment, before I go on rambling my thoughts <laughs> endlessly, I must also put some disclaimers out here that I'm no longer associated with Olympus. I'm not connected to OM Digital Solutions whatsoever. Uh, I don't have the camera, obviously. I'm no longer the ambassador and I have not seen one in person, right? So whatever comments that I make here is based on what everyone already know, the specifications online, the videos that we've watched, whatever information that's out there, I try to consume as much as I can in the past few days before I come on this stream. Uh, but I did talk to the local distributor for OM Digital Solutions and the people there actually told me that uh, the camera will be on sale very soon. So there was a surprise. I thought like usually it'll take pre-order, maybe one or two months later, then the camera will be available for everyone, right? But now it seems like it's available almost instantaneously. Like maybe now you can even already get it. Or if you go, go to the store and put some money, maybe you'll get it like really, really soon, right? So I think that's good news. Uh, they don't have problem with uh, supply and the, the camera is available really, really, really soon. Now, coming back to my first comment on this camera, it's not about the camera. I have a very important comment that I want to make. It's an observation on what's happening during the launch of the OM1 Mark II. Now, this is usually what happened when I was an ambassador or when I was involved with Olympus, right? I would get the camera early because, hey, privileges of being an ambassador back then when I was connected with them. Uh, I would usually get a camera like two to three weeks before the launch. I would go out to shoot as much as I can and then I will look at the photographs and make my review, whether it's in written blog format or I'll create a video to share my thoughts on what I like and dislike about the camera and share as much as I can with everyone, right? So-called initial review or early impressions of whatever camera or lenses that I get uh, when I was ambassador. So I remember very clearly as the launch of, of the product was happening, let's say it was launched at two o'clock here in Malaysia, I will put up, I'll schedule up my, my review. And as it hits two o'clock, my review is published alongside 
a lot of other reviews. And the first few hours, I remember I will sit down in a cafe or at home or somewhere in the office and I will just open up the computer and I will consume as much as I can. I will look at all the media coverage from large sites like Petapixel, DP Review. I will look at... Uh, other videos or reviews from ambassadors as well. From previously, we have like Peter Forsgaard when he was still with Olympus. And of course, I watched like Jimmy Chang. I watched a lot of other uh, big YouTubers or all, all the like Kai Wong as well, right? All these other photographer, YouTuber, content creator out there. I'll spend hours and hours, at least two to three hours going through all this content, right? Whether it's written format or video format, there'll be like at least a dozen. Once it's launched, you can easily find like 10, 12, videos available to watch and it was actually overwhelming because i have to go through like a lot of these videos and because as an ambassador i want to see what everyone else is thinking as well i want to hear the thoughts whether they agree with me or not whether we agree on the same things or whether there's something that i miss that i did not find out during my review process right hey i'm just human i can make mistakes or if i made any mistakes at all during my review i have to monitor so i spent hours and hours looking at other reviews interacting with other ambassadors uh, and yeah just taking notes and making sure that uh, whatever that I've done, everything was done properly. I didn't do any mistakes. Uh, that was the process. I had so much time because we are not lacking of a lot of photographers out there, amazing photographers making content. So that was back then, like three years, five years ago, right? But that's not the case a few days ago during the OM1 Mark II launch. Bear in mind, if it was other, other products, I don't, it would have been different. But OM1 Mark II it's a flagship camera from OM Digital Solutions. Flagship, it's at the top of the top. So I expect that when this camera was launched, there would have been a lot of hype. I would have, I would have expected to see videos from Chris, Chris Nichols and Jordan Drake from Petapixels. And I was surprised to see that nothing on Petapixels YouTube. They just did like a quick press release on the Petapixels website. And then I went over to see um, DP Review. Again, there's a press release with quick impression on the website. Nothing on their YouTube page on DP Review. All right. And even from the ambassador side, it was very quiet. The only ambassadors posting video on, in the first hour was Jimmy Chang from Red35. Jimmy did a fantastic job covering the OM1 Mark II and the 150 to 600 lens. He released two videos. I enjoyed his content thoroughly. I think it was he shared as much as he can. He shared some fantastic photographs. Kudos to Jimmy. I think he did a fantastic job as an ambassador, as a photographer and content creator. But other than Jimmy, nothing. Now, of course, there are a lot of videos on OM1. Don't get me wrong. But if you look closely, most of these videos were made by retailers, cameras, camera stores, right? For example, Adorama, their B&H, the camera store TV, like some of the random camera stores with names that I'm, I'm not even aware of. No reviews or no first impressions from photographers or content creators like Gordon Lang from the Camera Labs, for example, or Kai Wong, for example. Like, what happened to these people? And even... Huge publication sites like the photographer, they only publish a, a, an article today, like one day late. And Chris and Jordan only briefly talk about the OM1 Mark II briefly in one small section in the podcast. They did not even make a video to talk about OM1 Mark II specifically. I would have thought that a flagship camera would worth will be worth making just a dedicated video to talk about it. And they didn't even do that. Now, why is this happening? I think it's obvious, right? OM Digital Solutions is controlling the information that is being put out there. They don't want content creators to make content. They don't want other photographers, photographers other than the ambassadors to talk about it. And even within the ambassadors, they have a lot, a lot, a lot of ambassadors. I only saw like from Jimmy Chang and then after that, maybe there's like one or two other random ambassadors. I'm not even talking about the official video. Yes, the official video, there's like two or three ambassadors, but that's like the promo video. I'm talking about ambassadors coming on the platform to talk about the, the OM1 Mark II, right? None. Only Jimmy Chang. And that is worrying. Like, 
this is such an important product for the company. I would expect a lot more hype. And it makes sense for the company to send out samples ahead of the, the, the launch for these photographers to test and to talk about it. It costs them nothing. All they have to do is just invite the photographer to come to the office or they can go to the photographer. I did the job previously as, as an Olympus employee. We will find photographers, we loan them the camera and they will gladly review it. It costs you no money. Why did they not do this? Like I would expect at least Chris and Jordan to talk about the OM1 Mark II. Not seeing a video from Chris and Jordan? It feels wrong after all these years. Like, did they not understand how huge Chris and Jordan, this, both of them are? Like, from the days of the camera store, and then they moved to DP Reveal, which is technically the largest site, photography site in the world. And now that they're with Petapixel, I thought, like, they would drive a lot of traffic and a lot of awareness that would bring a lot of, um, like, attention to the new camera right and it was disappointing to not see that i don't know let me think like do you guys see any other reviews that i missed let me know did i miss any important reviews from ambassadors or any other important content creators that we used to see right? I, I used to have so much fun especially golden lang i enjoy golden lang's video all right i'm gonna get back to the to the comments before i get carried away <laughs> mia says hello robin from portugal hey mia thanks for dropping by anthony says hi robin do you know if there is any hardware improvements in the scammer at all sites, minor ergonomics improvement? Scammer? With the dial and joystick to... Yeah, that's... The, well, according to the promo material, it's improved for use with gloves, right? I don't know how true this is. I don't have the camera, so yeah. Andrew says, 75,000 is a real achievement. Thank you so much, Andrew. And thanks to you guys that I've hit this milestone, right? Hegel says, hello, Robin. Greetings from Germany. Hey, hey, cool. How are you? Forever and Amateur says 75,000. Hope for 25,000 more to become 100,000. That's the plan. <laughs> Oof says, um, is talking to Stewart. No worries. Stewart says, congratulations. Thank you so much. Elcano says, hi, Robin. Uh, let me just change something here. Hi, Robin. Thanks for your content, photography, and for being so nice guy. No worries. Thanks for saying that. Your passion is contagious. In a few months, I'll be in your country. We'll come to Malaysia and uh, drop me an email. If I'm free, let's have coffee together. Sea Lion says, I saw a Mark II of uh, autofocus demo with strong backlight and dark foreground. Maybe there is hope for autofocus was fixed. My issue with the single autofocus on the OM1 was not in a strong backlight, was not in a dark foreground whatsoever. It was low contrast, low light. Like seriously, very low contrast situations. Stuart says, I know your struggles with YouTube. <laughs> no worries. I think, yeah, YouTube is not easy. Hey, it's, it's, it's definitely. Uh, Pascal uh, is giving thumbs up. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. And Trick says, howdy from Washington. Thanks for being here. And thanks for the super chat, And Trick. You are so generous. You contributed every single week. <laughs> Van, hey Van, how are you? Van is a friend and fellow photographer and based in Kuala Lumpur, uh, definitely on the way to 100k. No worries, thank you so much. Thanks for the support all this time. Hey, Van has been such a wonderful friend. He's been there uh, a lot. Uh, a lot of my videos, you can see his fingerprints. He's helping me behind the scenes. So thank you so much, Van. I appreciate that. Pascal says, congratulations. Thank you so much. Van says, thanks for your hard work. No worries. And thanks for being here. And thanks for watching my videos. I appreciate that. As Mina says, what about some special events once you reach 100k? Maybe. Let's think about that. Let's reach 100k first, then we think about a special event, right? Cyclophobe says, don't, don't forget to like. Thank you so much. Anaka says, hi Robin, have you thought about reviewing and commenting on viewers' photos during streams? Uh, let me drink my coffee before, <laughs> before I, um, I comment on that. A lot of people have asked me to um, to do live critique, like you guys send in photos and I'll comment on them. And I'm not against doing that. Like if you meet me in person, if you ask me some questions, I'll definitely share my thoughts. Why I don't want to do it now or maybe not anytime soon is because if I comment on your photographs, I'm telling you what's right and wrong. And I feel that that's not the right thing for me to do. As a photographer, I have the way I see things. You have your way of seeing things and you don't have to agree with me and we can do our own things. 
just because I say certain things doesn't mean that that should be like the rule that everyone follows, right? And I don't see myself being like the best photographer or I don't see myself being qualified to comment on other people's photography. So my role here as a content creator on this YouTube channel is to encourage you to shoot more. You have to go on your own journey and discover yourself. The more you know about yourself, the more you know what you want to do with your photography, and the more you're confident in what you do when you go out and shoot, then you realize that, hey, there are certain things that you want to do, and you don't care what people think. And honestly, at the end of the day, the person you have to please, if you are a hobbyist photographer, is yourself. If you are shooting for fun, if you're doing it as a hobby, as a passion, you should make sure that you are happy shooting. Well, if you are a professional photographer, that's a different story because you're shooting for a client and you have to make sure your client is happy. So you are shooting for a client. So you have to communicate with your client and ask what your client wants. And I can go to five different clients, they all want different things. So I have to tweak like my shooting style to fit their needs, right? In their particular unique situations. But you are the photographer for yourself. You are shooting for yourself. I think that's the best uh, thing that any photographer can ask for, right? So that's why I'm, I'm not so keen on doing photo critique because it'll be me telling you what to do. And I don't feel that's right. I hope you understand, right? Andrew says, sadly I missed Rob's live stream, caught up with only about 20 minutes of it so far. No worries, you can always re-watch it, right? I think that a lot of the photographers there, uh, I was in that stream, we shared as much as we can on like capturing memories, uh, doing things that actually matter more than just uh, photography obsession. Like Brian talked about going back to basics. Peter talked about looking at the past work of great photographers. I think we shared some really cool stuff there. Harris, Dr. Harris, Aha, that's why Robin bought me coffee last week. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Harris. And Dr. Harris, I think we, we both agree that we need to see our friend Azul in Cheong Sam, right? <laughs> that's some inside joke. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Jonathan says, I'm still hoping OM Systems will include many of the updates the Mark II has in a firmware update to the OM1. It would be disappointing if they left us out in the cold. I'm not even sure if some of the updates are possible, like the buffer is not possible, right? They doubled the buffer and that needs physical storage medium, the RAM. Uh, and then the AI, I don't think that's possible as well. That requires some processing power. Uh, Maybe we can get the graduated life ND, life graduated ND, maybe. Uh, but like the 14-bit 14, 14 uh, raw when you shoot in high res, that is not possible with, with the firmware update. Warajet says, hi from Bangkok. Hey, thanks for dropping by. Very nice to see you. I'm new follower to your channel. Welcome and thanks for being here. I appreciate you. First time joining you live. Stay, stay around. Uh, we have a lot to discuss. Adip says, Hi Robin, please give me a suggestion on the best Marco Fulters compact camera. Thanks from Sarawak. If you want to keep things as compact as possible, you can look at Panasonic GF series like GF8, GF9, GF10, or Olympus EPL series like EPL9, EPL10 if you want the current cameras, right? If you want to go a bit uh, older, you can look at uh, EM10, you can look at uh, GX series from Panasonic. Technically, all the cameras from Micro Filters are quite compact. Gordon says, Hi Robin, just 6.20 here. Wow, that is really early. Good morning to you. Fajar says, Hi Robin, good night from Central Java, Indonesia. What's your opinion about Sony A9 Mark III versus OM Mark II with different format, but the same level of technology? What is the different output in your opinion? I don't have the A9 Mark III, and I obviously don't have the OM Mark II as just mentioned, so I cannot comment on these two cameras being put together. But the Sony will definitely have better autofocus. We all know that. And the Sony has global shutter, which is the future. I don't know how this will compromise the image quality and the performance, but that camera being the first to have the global shutter shows that Sony is really being serious in pushing the imaging boundaries, and I respect them for that. Norm says, I understand that the focus issue that you are experiencing on the OM1 has not been resolved in the Mark II. Yes, that's why I understand as well. Dylan says, they need to revive the Pan F more than anything. Wish it was a bigger sensor, but no, Micro Four Thirds hate. I don't think the sensor is going to get any bigger, but I, I'm sure they can revive it if they want to. Mike G says, uh, from, Phil from Philadelphia, 
Keeping my OMD EM1 Mark III. Yeah, EM1 Mark III is still such an awesome camera. Hey, no reason not to keep it. Gordon says, actually thought the new camera release had some nice incremental improvements. Nothing wrong improving an already good camera. That said, price seems high. Makes the G9 Mark II looks affordable. I know, right? And if you look at the G9 Mark II, it has some features that the... Um, EM1, sorry, the, the OM1 Mark II doesn't have, like 4K 120, and it shoots, uh, what else does it have? It has, my, my brain is not functioning now. I know that the G9 Mark II has some really cool features that the OM1 Mark II doesn't have. We all know that the video features is already on a higher level than the, the OM1 Mark II, right? As Mina says, focus limiter, yes. That's, I was, that's what I was talking about, the focus limiter earlier. Cyclofab says, yes, I always cover the name with a tape. Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier as well. Norm says, nothing that really makes me want to drop my EM1 Mark III. The graduate neutral density feature would be nice, but I can suffer comfortably with a physical filter. A physical filter would still be superior though. It actually cuts real light versus all the computational thing that's happening, right? If you don't mind using physical filter, you still get a lot more advantage from the actual filter itself. Anthony says, I have the manual steel for my Olympus OM40 and on the man manual plastered all over this OM system, that's what Olympus called your o camera and lens system in the past. It was known as OM system. Yep, that's it. That's what I was talking about earlier as well. Terry says, are we stuck on 20 megapixel sensor because Sony do not produce micro four thirds consumer camera sensor at higher pixel density? I think Lumix use, uses a non-Sony sensor. That's not true. If you look at the patents or the list of micro four thirds sensors that Sony is making, they have like what, 40 something megapixels image sensor? Yeah. They also have like a 30 something megapixels uh, micro four thirds image sensor. It's just that it's not being adopted by Olympus OM system or Panasonic. John Lo, hey John, we missed you earlier. John says, hello Robin, hope you had a good catch up. Sorry, couldn't join up. No worries, I hope you, you get well soon. Hey, I hope you're not feeling too, too bad. So I, I was supposed to catch up with John earlier today. Uh, we meet up for coffee and uh, yeah, uh, John John couldn't make it. Uh, so sorry to hear that. And I hope, hope you're, you're well, John. Robin says, good morning, uh, Robin from Maryland, US. Good morning to you too. Jem Carp says, here is hoping that some of the OM1 Mark II tech trickles down to the OM5 Mark II so it can come in a smaller package. I don't think there is any new features that can trickle down anymore. Like uh, if OM5 Mark II has USB-C, if it has, uh, you know, the improved uh, AI autofocus, I think that's, that's good enough. It's not plastic and they fix like the, the tripod mount. I think a lot of people will be happy. Anthony says in a few days, the Olympic Olympus system was known as OM system. This is nothing new. Yeah, that's true. Savio says, good morning from California. Good morning, Savio. Thanks for dropping by. Very nice to see you. Gordon says, by the way, enjoy your comments on the Rob Track session. No worries. Thank you so much for stopping by. Let's hope for smaller micro photos cameras in the future and better coffee for you. Thank you so much. Yes, I do need smaller. We all, I think we all can benefit from smaller cameras, all right, from micro four thirds. Cook Boy says, OM1 Mark II is not terrible, but not anything to get excited about. 150 to 600 is cool, but too much, too expensive. I really hope they release Pan F Mark II or uh, please Pancake Prime Lens this year. Yeah, I think Pan F iteration makes sense because everyone is riding on the retro classic vintage camera hype at the moment. Look at what Fuji is doing. Look at what Nikon is doing, especially with the uh, um, Nikon's... Oh, Oh my goodness, what, what camera was it? The ZF? Is that Nikon ZF? Yeah, uh, my brain is not functioning tonight. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that, that would be really, really, really awesome. And I think that if we can put like the updated image stabilization, autofocus performance, good electronic viewfinder, weather ceiling on the Pan F Mark II, that would be really compelling. AK47 says, last night I watched your discussion with Rob Track, Peter, and a few other YouTubers. What I can conclude is that OM system should improve the video feature on the new OM1. Yeah, and they did not, unfortunately. I think the video feature on the new OM1 Mark II is exactly the same as what we get from OM1 original, which is disappointing though. Like, a lot of people are asking for 4K 60 at least. Yeah. 
Hi from Thailand says, I have an OMD EM10 Mark III with 14 to 42 kit lens, 1745 40 to 150. It does not look like the new Sony camera quality. What is Olympus equivalent of those Sony cameras? Sen Sambal Sarati Pinoy in Thailand. What do you mean by Sony camera quality? I think the Olympus EM10 Mark III is better built than some Sony cameras. It feels more rugged and solid. I think that the camera's image stabilization is definitely better than any Sony cameras even today. Right? Uh, I think it has some features that Sony cameras may not have, only some Sony cameras have. And I think that in overall, the, the EM10 Mark III is... Uh, you have to look at it from a ba basic entry-level camera point of view, right? So what are you comparing the EM10 Mark III with? Are you comparing with, say, an A6500? Or are you comparing with A7 Mark IV? I think that's not fair, right? So if you're comparing with the low-level cameras from Sony, say the A6000 series, I think the EM10 can match. Of course, the video-wise is falling behind, but like in photography-wise, I think it can still do really, really well. I lost the comment again. Uh, where were we? Let's see. Give me a moment, guys. Ah, found it. Ben says, as an OM1 owner, I would have zero problem paying for a firmware update for the OM1. As a software developer myself, it ain't free to write new code. It's not as simple as a firmware upgrade. Uh, I believe that 14-bit raw for the high-resolution shot, the double buffer, these are physical hardware upgrades, right? And even the new AI, you can't just chuck an AI processing in, right? It requires a lot more power. So yeah, I don't think it's just as simple as, uh, oh, let's just change the software. It's not as simple as that. Yeah, Sven says, oh, Mark II, the most expensive firmware update ever. And it's not just firmware, right? Yeah. Tony says, a fair thing would be to get all the improvements from the OM Mark II. No, it's not. Again, I said it's not possible, right? It's not as simple as that. But what, what, I, what I would say is that the OM Mark II could have had more upgrades rather than the few that has been announced, right? I'm not saying that these are not important. Yes, we can get the live graduated ND filter, we get better buffer, we get the human AI, we get 14-bit raw high resolution shot. All these are nice improvements. We get better image stabilization, but we want more, right? And we're gonna talk about that a little bit better, uh, a little bit later. Star says, best we should call it technology facelift. <laughs> Clean says, after watching all the reviews that have come out, I'm starting to believe that this might actually be the wow camera that the OM1 was supposed to be if the focus upgrades are real. Not true. Like, uh, I wish the OM1 had better image quality, like I want more resolution, dynamic range, and high ISO. Just a little bit more. I'm not asking for, for it to surpass full-frame cameras. Just maybe one stop better ISO improvement, one stop better dynamic range for me to recover a little bit more highlight details and shadows, right? Because everyone else is making progress. And I'm just asking the camera to have better ergonomics. Like, I find that it's a step backward from EM1 Mark II and EM1 Mark III. When I hold the EM1 Mark II in my hand or EM1 Mark III, it just feels right and that comfort that security is gone there's just something wrong with the OM1's handling I talk about that in my video so there are a lot of things that uh, they are taking away from the previous cameras uh, and I wish there's more that they do with the upgrades in terms of performance in terms of uh, image quality output right because after all at the end of the day we do want more or better image quality we want to see progress yeah so to me it's not a wow camera and now that they use exactly the same image sensor and image processor that's even more disappointing Mirla says i'm not impressed that om are saying that om1 can't be upgraded to anywhere near the new camera historically as you know robin olympus gave us great firmware updates no longer they may be able to add some features within the processing power and the limitations of the om1 we might get them in the future and don't just give up on them yet but there are some things that just cannot be upgraded right like the buffer double i mean we have more than double the buffer like how are you going to upgrade it through firmware upgrades it's just not possible cool boy says i personally don't care that they're stuck at 20 megapixels it's still new and stacked image quality is excellent air upscaling is great i really wish improvement of dynamic range either at low or high eyes so yeah that's just what i've mentioned right but then there are certain uh, agencies that require a minimum of 24 megapixels deliverables as a professional photographer so if you are a pro if you want to stay in the game 
20 megapixels may not be enough forever, right? I'm not saying it's not enough for me. For me, it's more than enough. But if I were to target some large agencies, if I were to shoot for this, to get these jobs, they may need higher megapixel count. And that 20 megapixels may not be enough. Stargetter says, did, did they say no upgrade? Yeah, they didn't say anything. Uh, but then again, staying quiet is not really inspiring confidence as well, right? I wish they have said something. Oh, you know, like we will have firmware upgrade coming, give it some time. That would have been better, right? Colin says, I'm considering buying the 90 macro. Has anyone got any comments about the lens? I have zero comments. I thought the lens is overpriced, oversized. And there were some reviews, legit reviews, that says that the 60mm lens is sharper. Anthony says, uh, even that you're no longer an OM system ambassador, they should get in touch with you and loan you the new camera to try out. You're a very well respected Micro Four Thirds user and OM system user. Even when I was an OM system ambassador, they didn't get in touch with me and they didn't give me any loan units to try out. So what do you think will change now that I'm no longer with them? <laughs> That's the reason why I left in the first place, right? Like, I can understand that they don't give me the loan unit in the first place because it's limited and I'm in Malaysia. Malaysia is a small market. It's in the middle of nowhere. I understand. But at least, like, give me some information so that I can talk about it, right? I can prepare in advance. So during launch, I can do, like, a live stream or talk about my, my impressions, early impressions or opinion, right? Nothing. I follow up inf information with everyone else, and I think that's discipline. That's, that's why I left. Jack says, hello Robin, hey Jack, thanks for dropping by, I hope you are well, I'm doing great. During your initial OM1 review, it was not a review, it was just, I was sharing my thoughts. You say it was missing something to make it a wild camera, I expect a lot of people said wow when they look at the Mark II specs. Yeah, no wow, if you look at the comments so far, not even one person said it was a wild camera. Larry says, actually it's a... Uh, $2,399 for a filmmate upgrade? No, it's not. Uh, though I, I do admit that I would appreciate more upgrades, like actual like, image quality improvements, and maybe a few better features there and here. I, I agree. Klaus says, disappointed. Most would be possible by firmware upgrade. I Again, I disagree. So will you get firmware updates at the original OM1 and now for the autofocus? I'm sure they can if they want to. I don't see why they can't. Ben says, I see no problem with the OM1 Mark II as an update. Tech is plateauing. People have unreasonable expectations. Maybe they should up video specs, but that's about it. Otherwise, what more can they do? They can improve the image quality. They can give us a new sensor. Mind you, this is a flagship camera. If it was any other cameras like OM5, OM10, the Pan series, Pan F, I would have been okay with the same image sensor, same processor. But this being a flagship, being a successor to replace the OM1, it needs a better sensor. And the fact that the OM1's image sensor does not have any improvement compared to the previous cameras like the EMR Mark II, EMR Mark III, it was very disappointing to start with. And now they're stuck with the same quality. It's even more frustrating. <laughs> Pavel says, so the common opinion is that OM systems are doing pretty bad. Are they going to go bankrupt? They won't go bankrupt. They're just going to suffer and do really bad. Jack says, I've seen a good comment relating to Petapixel not releasing a video yet. Uh, OM probably don't want to hear an unbiased review relating to the camera from a company they have been sponsoring. Yeah, but they have been always been honest anyway. And what's wrong with honest opinion? Like seriously, I think we need honesty, right? In this world, we can use some honesty. Klaus says, and there was now flagship online event. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take some a, a small pause here because it's just past 11 o'clock. I've been talking nonstop for one hour. I'm just going to drink some water and then a little bit of coffee and we'll continue. Wow, we have 200 people live concurrently. That's a lot of people. Hmm. Ah, refreshing water. I'm going to... Have some caffeine. Hmm. All right, uh, before I continue with the comments, let me just share a bit more thoughts on the OM1 Mark II camera, right? Where is the camera? Camera, camera. All right, there it is. <laughs> now, here is the thing. All right, I just commented that we have lack of media coverage, lack of uh, opinion from real photographers, independent reviewers 
content creators or YouTubers other than ambassadors, right? There was my initial comment. And I feel that they are missing the mark here because I want to see more attention drawn to this camera. And let's face it, they don't really have many ambassadors that can use these days. They are legit, right? So more attention would be good. But let's look at the product now. So previously I was talking about lack of media coverage. Let's look at the product itself. Now, OM1 Mark II, this is supposed to be the successor to the OM1. That's why it's called Mark II. It has the same body. It's 99% the same. Maybe improve a little bit of the dials there and here, change the name from Olympus to OM system. But it's basically the same body, same grip, uh, same placement of buttons, same ergonomics. Everything is the same, right? Same external body, same internal processor. Maybe they improve a little bit of hardware. I don't know. They didn't say anything. Same image stabilization. Yes, it's improved from 8 stops to 8.5 stops. But seriously, I can bet it's the same image stabilization system. They just improve the algorithm for the gyro detection system. So the gyro is a little bit more sensitive. They can correct the movement a little bit better. So that's why this uh, improvement of effectiveness bump from 8 to 8.5. So we have the same 5 assist image stabilization. We have the same image processor, meaning that you get exactly the same resolution, image quality, high ISO, color, noise profile whatsoever. You get the same autofocus. I don't even know if the human AI is anything new. Maybe it's just the same human detection being changed, relocated to the AI uh, subject detection, right? Maybe maybe they rework a little bit. I'm sure they improved. Uh, I don't know. The website keep teasing. The ambassadors keep teasing. Wow, the autofocus is improved, 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 improved. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. I don't know. But the point is, it is basically the same camera, same externals, same internals, same EVF, same LCD screen. We get same weather ceiling, no improvement there. Uh, everything is almost the same, right? All right, now let's talk about the changes or the upgrades. There are some upgrades that's worth talking about. The most significant one will be the live graduated ND, new computational feature. I think that's going to benefit a lot of uh, landscape photographers. If you're doing a lot of landscapes, you're dealing with different exposures within your frame. One way to maximize dynamic range is to use graduated ND filter. Now that you can use, do that internally in the camera, that benefits a lot. But it's not game changing. It's not revolutionary. It's not like it's going to be like, oh, everyone's going to want this feature right away. Uh, as someone has just pointed, you can actually use a physical filter and a filter is not large. It's not like fire assist image stabilization. It can replace tripods in a lot of situation. Not having to bring a tripod with you, that is a game changer. But filter is just tiny, right? It just takes like a small space in your bag. And using an actual filter actually gives you a lot more freedom as well. You have more controls as well. So yes, it's good to have the live grad ND in the computational feature, but it's, to me, it's not game changing. They double the buffer, so if you're shooting a lot of bursts, shooting 120 frames per second or 50 frames per second, burst sequential shoot. Previously, people complained, you just press the shutter button for less than one second and the buffer is filled, right? So now they double, actually more than double the buffer, so you can shoot a lot more. Maybe you shoot like another one second and then the buffer is filled. That's the good news. Uh, definitely, we need more buffer. That's definitely welcome. Improvements of autofocus. I don't know how much they improve. I really wish. I don't even need them to improve. I just need them to fix the flaw. And no one has verified this so far. I can only verify this if I can get my hands on one unit and to test it myself. But so far, they have this human AI detection. I don't know how much better it is from the current human face detection. I know the human face detection on the Olympus cameras has never been the strongest. If you compare with, say, Sony or Canon, Sony has always been ahead in this game. So I hope that they are getting better and I hope they have caught up with Sony and it's kind of sad that you know Olympus or you know now the OM Digital Solutions previously in Olympus time they've always been the forefront when it, it comes to mirrorless cameras right Olympus has always been at the front they started 5 axis image stabilization they're the first to inf implement really good electronic viewfinder they were first the first to make a weather sealed mirrorless camera they show what a true pro mirrorless camera can be the EM1 EM5 right they were the first to have really fast autofocus like the autofocus in EM1 was faster than any Sony cameras at that time they show the blueprint of what a true professional camera can 
can be. And now they are trailing behind everyone else. And even with the latest OM1, they are not really catching up yet, I feel. My honest opinion on the EM OM1 Mark II, I wish that they put in a new image sensor 25 megapixels or 30 megapixels would be great. I wish there's improvement in dynamic range, one stop minimum, improvement in high ISO. Some people keep saying, yeah, you know, we have this gigapixel, the AI, noise, whatever software now, but every time you load in the software, it takes time. The photograph should have been better immediately out of the camera. If you want to spend time cleaning it up later, that's up to you. But the, Image by default from the camera should be good. And no AI software can improve dynamic range. If the dynamic range is bad, if you show the high ISO, you still lose dynamic range, you still lose details. These are the things that I expect to be improved in the latest flagship after all these years. And still it is not improved. So with that, I am quite disappointed. And they are asking for higher price? Hmm. <laughs> I honestly, I'm not really happy with that. All right, let's see what everyone is saying. Andrew is saying, it does seem very strange that it's only Jimmy that did a video. I know, right? Why only Jimmy? Nothing against Jimmy. Jimmy is great. I love his video. I wish there's more like that, right? Like, what are the ambassadors doing? Are, are the ambassadors sleeping? Like, seriously? <laughs> Stargetter says, I think the politics around the OM1 Mark II and the possibility of firmwares for the older version is still not made. If they decide whether they do a firmware update, whether it's free or not, it'll be free. Just give them time. Like, we can't really say that they're not making a firmware update, right? Uh, DK says, no, it's like what you said, all the videos are by retailers. Yeah, like, what's with that? Like, I don't want to see videos from retailers, it's just information, right? I'd rather read reviews from like DP Review, I'd rather see videos from Petla Pixel, I'd rather see like Golden Lang, Camera Labs, or any other photographers out there. Any photographers, actual photographers, independent reviewers, they'll be really fun. Mirrorless Reflection says, I've seen some reviews by ambassadors, but some of these people are new ambassadors and not the more well-known ones. Yeah, that's the problem, right? Like, we have existing content creators we have existing media like big names like chris and jordan gordon lang why don't you send the cameras to them like it doesn't cost you anything like why it doesn't make sense jack says thomas Ezel. i don't know how to pronounce that name sorry thomas did a very thorough review of the mark ii easily the most in-depth of the ones that i've seen but thomas <laughs> i let's just put it this way I disagree with him on a lot of things. I think as a photographer, he got a lot of basics wrong. That's just, this is the end of my comment there. And for him to talk about one hour on a camera that has the same body, same sensor, same processor, same image stabilization, same EVF, same LCD screen, same weather ceiling, and you need one hour to talk about the camera, he should learn from Jimmy Chang. <laughs> All right, Gordon says, agree. Jimmy did a good job and also noted the lack of any big site coverage. And don't forget Chris on Petapixel, a big OM fan. Don't get why. Yes, Chris is using, was it the EM1 Mark II and the OM1 to do his personal projects, right? And a lot of videos on Petapixels and DP Review were filmed on Panasonic Micro Four Thirds cameras, GH5, G9. Jordan is using Panasonic cameras to make those videos. Like these people are the forefront of Micro Four Thirds, right? Right? They're huge supporters. Like, why? I don't see it. Terry says, Jimmy wasn't the only ambassador in the UK to talk about the OM1 Mark II. There was major coverage on the OM Systems YouTube channel, but only in-house. I noticed that no independent reviews have been made. Now, nothing against OM Systems YouTube channel, but all they did was what? Live streams? Like what I'm doing now? What's the difference? Anyone can do live streams, right? What I want to do is actual photographers going out with the OM1 Mark II cameras, test it thoroughly and share the thoughts and share photographs. I want to see photographs. I am excited when I see new photographs, beautiful photographs. That gets me going, gets me inspired to go and shoot, right? And it's like, I don't have the camera. So they are just there talking. What's the difference, right? I want to see them doing something and they are not doing anything. And all these uh, ambassadors doing those promotional videos, that doesn't count. Those are just marketing campaign. 
Uh, James says, Andy Rouse, who is not an ambassador, did a short review. Yeah, but then again, it's like, I feel that there could have been more, especially the, the, the more known media, right? This is the reason why we have media in the first place. Jonathan says, uh, talking to Ben, part of the overhead we pay for when purchasing a new camera is for future updates and support. It's like AMD and NVIDIA putting out new driver updates. Yeah, exactly. It's after sales support, right? Eric says, I'm just glad you didn't pre-release review that OMR Mark II. Jimmy is fantastic, uh, but I feel like the reviews were paddling snake oil. I know Jimmy and others were being watched from OM. Yeah, he's an ambassador, so he has to say nice nice things about the, the camera. But I, I do feel that he's doing a great job uh, sharing information, especially highlighting the improvements or the changes on the OMR Mark II and showing the actual use case scenario, like the difference the buffer makes, right? I thought that was really great of him. Yeah. Norm says, Chris also has a soft spot for Olympus cameras, so it would be a no-brainer to get a Mark II Outlook from him. I know, right? Like, I am a huge fan of Chris, and I thought like, as a photography content creator, as a camera reviewer, he's one of the best out there. It's a big mistake not letting him try the camera and make a content before the release date, right? Star says, at least a lens update firmware will be issued for the OM1, but the autofocus update is the most needed. Yeah. Christoph says, everything about OM releases smells like milking the cash cow. Nothing technical and product-wise seems to be thought thorough thought through only new model instead of firmware updates and make it more expensive yeah i i guess that's like the general impression that everyone is getting right like we wish that i personally wish that they do a lot more in the oima mark ii like if it has a new sensor i would have been sold like if they promise like hey we have like one stop better dynamic range you know like oh maybe like it's uh 28 megapixels i would have that would be my next camera like, i would really save up for that camera Gordon says, don't get why Petapixel didn't cover given Chris is such a big fan. It's not Petapixel's fault. They admitted they don't have the camera at that time. And uh, in the latest podcast, I don't know if you've watched the podcast, there's, a, there's like a short section of uh, Chris and Jordan talking about the OM1 and the new products. And they said they will be testing the cameras. And that's what they do, right? So they will release a video sooner or later. I just wish that they launch the video together during the release, the actual release the first wave of reviews, right? That would have been really awesome. Stargator says, currently it tracks birds better than my kids. <laughs> and sometimes our kids are more important than birds, right? Would you agree? <laughs> Gary says, good to see you again, Robin. Congrats on the 75,000 subscribers. Thank you, Gary. Thanks for dropping by. Gary is a fellow Micro Four Thirds content creator. Do check out Gary's uh, YouTube channel. He does make some fantastic videos. Yeah. Harry says, I love that thought, bro. Which thought? Hmm. Now that we are quite far behind. Sorry about that. I know I'm a little bit behind on comments. Tonight, we have like an influx of, uh, of viewers. We have more than 200 people now live concurrently. Uh, Bernard says, Aspen Helen is an OM ambassador. He did a video the same day. The problem is that OM is pushing ambassadors under the bus to do their dirty work. It's sad. Ambassadors should stand their regular users. Was Aspen releasing his own on his own platform? Did, did we see anything from Aspen's website or YouTube channel? Because if it did, I'm sure YouTube would have recommended me the video. YouTube's algorithm is usually spot on. The fact that I don't see anything from Aspen means that he wasn't doing anything on his own. Yeah. Like I was uh, an ambassador from, for Olympus. Everyone knew that, right? Previously. And I used my own platform to talk about Olympus products. And I think that's a better way to reach my own audience, right? To reach a wider audience. Harry says, subscribe. Thank you so much, Harry. P appreciate that. Mr. Brandon says, I personally believe that OM biggest mistake is not a PR push for the new camera, but not having Robin as ambassador. There's no one with as much passion and commitment to this product. You are too kind. Uh, but I think at this moment, it doesn't matter whether I'm ambassador or not. 
I am still, I hope you guys can see that I am still a big supporter of Micro Four Thirds. I still believe in the product and I genuinely want to see OM Digital Solutions and Panasonic succeed. I want them to continue to give us wow cameras and lenses and I will continue to use Micro Four Thirds cameras and lenses for my own personal shoots as well as professional jobs. And I want them to continue to make products and I want a future for Micro Four Thirds, right? I think. I believe in the system. I'm gonna continue making content on Micro Four Thirds. That's not gonna change. I think that matters more, right? Rather than me being an ambassador. Gary says, I don't have any opinion on the OM1 Mark II, but I do wish for a smaller EPL series or even Pan F Mark II from OM system. Micro Four Thirds for me is all about the weight and size reduction. Yeah, I hope they release some lower level cameras like OM10 series, for example. That would be really great, right? Keith says, uh, Thomas in Austria did a fantastic and very thorough OM1 to review. I beg to, di I beg to differ. Mostly steals oriented and very convincing respect to the value of the upgrade. Most other videos came nowhere close. Like, why is he not an ambassador? <laughs> he should be an ambassador, right? Barry says, hello Robin from London. Hey Barry, how are you? Anthony says, I did hear that they increased the ramp inside the camera, that's all. Yeah, that's what Jordan Drake says on Petapixel. Andrew says, as talking to Jonathan, it makes no real commercial sense to issue a firmware update and prevent sales of the new camera. Yeah, that's true. They want to make money. Wolfie says, but they should be able to add human AI detection because it's just another mode separated from the other ones. The processing shouldn't be more than the OM1 can do. We don't know that. We don't know how much processing power it requires. We don't know the mechanics of the human AI processing, right? Whether you can just reuse the old processor for that. It's not as simple as that. David Crooks, hey David. Very nice to see you here. David's talking to Anthony, hardware-wise, many other software updates, yeah. Garrett says, been with Olympus OM since E10, but since EM1 Mark II, it seems updates, innovations, releases have become less and less frequent and less impressive. The OM1 Mark II barely moves the needle. It's very concerning. It, is. And I, I was hoping that the OM1 Mark II would address some of the important issues. I would really wish, actually, I really want a WoW product from them. And the fact that there's no WoW in the OM1 Mark II, yeah, that is a cause for concern. You're right. Abby says, just one camera and a lens. Which, which would you choose? EM1 Mark II, 12 to 40 F2.8 Pro. Logically, if I were to use it for a job, right? Uh, but if it's just for personal use, let's say I'm just I'm not a working photographer anymore, I don't have to deliver to clients an EM10 and a 25 f1.8 just for personal shutter therapy and personal shoots. Wolfie says I wish they would improve the single autofocus and single point autofocus in low light and low contrast and do something about the tracking autofocus on OM1. Oops, we are. The video froze. Just give me a moment to fix it. Give me a moment. Should be able to fix this. All right, and we are back. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, Wufi says uh, improving the autofocus tracking on OM1. If they don't, I won't be buying the OM1 Mark II until it falls down. Yeah, I really, really wish they improved the autofocus. Hey, the single autofocus. To me, that's very important. I know everyone says that continuous autofocus is the future, but I've tested both the continuous autofocus and single autofocus, and they both suck in low light and low contrast. Unfortunately, that's the truth. Barry says, it's the 150 to 600 on oil system made by Sigma. I wouldn't know. Hey, that's what everyone says if they look at the, uh, the patterns as well as the lens glass element arrangement. The, everyone concludes that it's made by Sigma and it's being rebatched. Santix, hey Santix, very really nice to see you again watching from Kajang. How are you Santix? I hope you are well. Did you go to the, um, the camera fair last, last weekend? Oh. We are frozen again. My goodness, what is happening? Let me check. I hope everything is okay. Okay, second time fixing this. I hope everything continues fine. I hope I don't have to restart the computer. <laughs> Maybe it's too much talk, right? Too much OM1 Mark II talk. Mm. We still have 233 people. 
So Santik says, do you think this would be a wild camera from OM system? Nope, I just said it's not. Jack says, camera conspiracies did a skit about how OM come up with the OM Mark II. It was hilarious. We have seven employees and six are working on image stabilization. <laughs> okay. David says, I was talking to uh, Barry. You guys keep talking to each other. UZ Gunner says the real shocking is that OM Digital Solutions did drop support for OM Mark One Honest after only 15 months. This is a betrayal. Well, I don't think they stopped any support. Hey, like we will have to wait until that really happens. Like if we don't see anything from them. Oh, we have uh, another super chat. I missed this from Squidart. Thank you so much. We'll complain when a new camera drops. <laughs> That's what we do, right? Thank you so much, Squidart. I really appreciate that. Sorry, I didn't see your super chat sooner. Yeah, it was buried with all the comments. All right, coming back up to the other comments. Who is Seraphine? Hey, how are you? Late from Orlando. We'll be listening from the beginning. Oh, no worries. No worries. Thank you for stopping by. C-Line says, on specs and features, the Mark II feels like it is what the original OM1 should have been. Not really. I still think that OM1 could have been better, like a new sensor, better dynamic range, better high ISO, and give us a lot better single autofocus performance in low contrast, low light. Stargetter says, the 150 sensor uses a Sigma design. However, we do not know what they changed beyond the bayonet and the firmware and the auto design. Yeah, we don't know that. Yeah. For instance, Leica uses a different high di diffraction lens in the construction to improve both the sharpness on 2470, but it's also possible to improve given design. Yeah, it's all just speculation, right? I don't want to make assumptions. Hula says, agree, but Olympus O Vision is also for compact camera design as well, and the Panav has already got that within its design. Now that it's time to improve on that strength. Yeah, we, we could use a Panav update now in 2024, now that everyone's going retro to fight with uh, Nikon, with fight with Fuji and everyone else, right? That would be really awesome. I don't mind a new Panav. I think it will sell really well now. Anthony says, hopefully next year, OM Systems will introduce an all-new OM2 with all-new image sensor and image processor. Let's keep our fingers crossed for such camera. Yeah, I hope so too, for the sakes. David says, 150 to 600 is fully weather sealed and a full IS connectivity. Yeah, but then again, like, uh, I can understand that the lens, like, I think a lot of people can forgive OM Digital Solutions rebadging the Sigma lens. Uh, from full frame to, to just change the logo whatsoever. But the fact that they are charging so much more, like it's more than double the price, I think that's what put a lot of people off. It's the pricing that, that's the, the biggest turn off. Stargate says 150 to 600, most likely they change the coating for color rendition. It is also possible to change some glass, it's also improve center sharpness as full frame edges are not needed for uh, micro four thirds. Yeah, that's true. We don't know what's happening inside. Like a lot of things are kept secret from us, right? Xmina says there were worse updates. P Pentax. Oh, let's not talk about Pentax. Hey, Pentax is it's like they live in their own universe. Like they don't care what everyone else is doing. So it's not even fair to talk about them. Ken says, hi, Mr. Wong. Hey, Ken, how are you? I will wish for more improvement and a new sensor for the Mark II. Yeah, that's why I, I wish as well. Flappy Socks says, if you look at the sens uh, sensor spec from Sony, it feels like OM should be able to do more of the sensor. Full sensor real at 10 bit and almost 120 frames looks possible. I know, right? Yeah, it seems like they are not squeezing as much as they can from the image sensor. Santi says, I have yet to check out what is new about the OM Mark II yet. Wow, you must be really busy, Santix. What have you been doing? David says, the buffer helps a lot. That's true, depends, but depends on what you do though. Like for me, I don't shoot like 50 frames per second, right? I don't even use burst sequential shot. Uh, I just use single click, but I click a lot. And the current buffer in my EMR Mark II is more than sufficient for me. But of course, if you need the buffer, it makes a world of difference. I agree with that. Our register says, Ambassador, you should be CEO because of enthusiasm. Well, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves, right? Like, uh, I'm passionate about photography, but I may not be the person with the vision and the business sense to run a company. Like, uh, the CEO will need to be able to strategize and bring profit to the company, right? It's not just making a camera that we all like. Like, if I put all the best things in the camera and sell it really cheap for all of us, we'll love that, and the camera, the company will go bankrupt. <laughs> Anthony says, best thing you can do if your computer up, the, the performance of the uh, operation of the computer is increase the RAM. There's no difference with a camera. They virtually are computers themselves. That's what they did, right? They improved the RAM. 
Rebirth 2526, hey, how are you? I start to agree with you that OM system really overstocked 20 megapixel sensors. If G9 Mark II uses 25, then the OM Mark II should move to 25 too, but they do not. Yeah, I know, right? It's a little bit disappointing. Jack says, when I say a wild camera, I mean like, oh, they are using the same sensor again. Yeah, I, I, get, I get your sarcasm there. Animal Infotainment says, hi Robin, I think OM are forced to update the OM1 since they can't use the name of Olympus from 2025 or so. Yeah. Doesn't hurt to get a new image sensor with improved image quality with the update, right? I think that will sell 10 times more cameras. George says, who makes the sensors? Well, the speculation, speculation is Sony. Chuck says, it becomes a hard sell when a full-frame Sony A7 Mark IV is mere $100 US more. I know, right? Like, I, I don't really want to compare Micro Four Thirds to Full Frame, but it seems like Micro Four Thirds is really losing the edge now. And the Full Frame options are so compelling. The only thing that's holding me back and holding a lot of people back is the size and weight of some lenses, right? And the price, of course, of the lenses. But other than that, Full Frame cameras are not expensive and they're offering a lot more than what OM Digital Solutions is doing. Squeda says, I think Sony makes more most sensors, but I believe that OM has its own sensor manufacturing operation. Don't quote me on that. No, they don't. Yeah, even Olympus did not have their own sensor manufacturing plant. How did I know that? I was an employee. Hmm. David Cruz says, I've seen a ton of videos on YouTube on Tuesday about the camera and lenses, but the videos are from camera retailers. Adorama, b &H, the camera store, some random camera shop names, which I don't even know. The only videos that are from ambassadors are Jimmy, Jimmy Chang from Red35, and uh, a non-ambassador was Andy Rouse, which some people have highlighted. Oh wow, the video has frozen again. Yeah, we may need to change some things up, but let me just quickly fix this. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Let me just see if everything is okay down there. I think everything is fine. Yeah, um, yeah. Back to David's comment. I the only video that I saw was Jimmy, and even the ambassadors. Like I thought there will be more videos from other ambassadors as well. Let me just turn off something quickly on the video side of things. This may freeze things, so do bear with me. I'm gonna change some things on the software a little bit. So do bear with me. I hope this fixes the freezing problem because I did enable something different this time. So I am going to delete this and I hope this solves the problem a little bit. Yeah. Okay, let's hope everything goes fine. Robin says the original OM1 has minor upgrades in the OM1 and OM1 MD. It added N and MD to show the upgrades. I think the Mark II to Mark IV cameras are following this same idea, same camera with few upgrades. Well, I hope so too, but then they are, if it's a minor upgrade, then why are they charging so much more? That's the question that a lot of people can't answer, right? Wafis Dark says, Hi Robin, off topic, but do you think using manual vintage lenses is reasonable for professional portrait photography? Greetings from Austria. Depends on how patient your clients are. My clients will not wait for me to like, please hold it there, just a little bit more, your eyes, don't, don't move. Like, please don't move. Like, if you move just, just by one millimeter, so you'll be out of focus. Like, you know, just wait there, like, please don't move. My clients don't have that patience, so autofocus is the way to go. But if your clients are like saints, then of course, vintage lenses. David says, uh, not true about the IS and autofocus. Which part is not true? Keith says, graduate any filter feature alone is worth at least a couple of hundred dollars alone. It works beautifully. See Thomas Isel. Yeah, I disagree with that guy a lot. I'm not going to see him. Sorry, Keith. Chuck says, two second handheld EMA Mark III, one on OM1 Mark II. Really? Wow. Okay. Martin says, hi Robin. Hey Martin. Nice to see you here. Thanks for dropping by. David says, the two times buffer is the biggest feature and allows all the other software updates. What other software updates? <laughs> 
I pretty much see the same camera, right? It's, there's not much upgrade if you ask me. And the biggest improvements I want is, is autofocus, single autofocus. I hope they improve that, which I don't think they did. And image quality, which we see zero improvement. Lumiere says, best thing about OM system lately is the new 600mm lens. Pretty sure it will attract the wildlife photographers same way as the latest uh, macro did attract many macro photographers. Are you sure the latest macro attract a lot of macro photographers? Where did you get that information? I'm curious. Ken says, he's talking to Robin. You guys keep talking to each other. Anthony says, hopefully next year, I'll see a real wild camera with a minimum resolution of 26 megapixels. Yeah, I know, right? And an all new, more powerful image processor inside. Same. I hope we see that too. Andrew says, what's not being mentioned here is the future. These upgrades are quite minor. I agree, Andrew. That's very concerning. Talking about Andy graduated filters, any decent landscape shooters will have the filters already and I won't use an emulation instead. I know, right? It's merely a, a convenience feature in the camera. It's barely making any difference. I agree with you. Andrew says, but the future has been two years for minor upgrades. That means in real terms that we should not expect any other flagship for another 24 months. They'll be way behind by then and they're already so behind at this moment. Yeah, that's why I was talking about like the future of micro four thirds in some of my streams. I was talking about our wish list on OM1 cameras and you know like, yeah, I am also genuinely concerned about the future for OM digital solutions. It's a very valid observation there, Andrew, and, and thank you for sharing. Ron says the autofocus AI in people is renewed. I heard that the camera now also recognize people from, uh, for example, back, so not only in the face. I hope so too, because currently it's, it's not working too well. Like if you compare with Sony, it's actually falling quite far behind. We have another super chat. Hey, Bastin, I thought you gave me a super chat already. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's like so generous of you. Thank you so much. Bison says, everyone who watches your channel enjoys it if you test gear. That's expensive. Buying gear, traveling, and this time you can't shoot for clients. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate that you understand my struggles of making content on this YouTube channel. And I really appreciate that, uh, yeah, you're contributing. Oh my goodness, there's another one uh, from you. Yeah, from Bastian. That's two, two super chat. Uh, Bastian says, Minimum wage in Indonesia is $300. How expensive camera gear must be in relation to people's income. So I thank you for spending money for us. Yeah, people don't get it, right? Like if you do a wedding uh, job in the US, you can charge like, I don't know, 5,000 US dollars onward or even 10,000 US dollars. That's not unheard of if you are a well-known, uh, uh, successful wedding photographer, right? Like here in Malaysia, you want to charge like 5,000 ringgit. People will look at you like, what? And 5,000 ringgit is barely 1,000 US dollars. And that's like expensive already. So my point is as a professional photographer here in Malaysia, I'm, I'm speaking for everyone in Malaysia, we earn a lot less. Even if we are doing jobs every day, we get like a lot of clients, we earn significantly less. And with the amount of money that we, we, we earn, we can't just buy a flagship camera like every now and then. We really need to think <laughs> and make sure that the camera has significant upgrades, right? That's why I was complaining so much about the OM-1 uh, and now the OM-2 that it, they don't have wow enough uh, or big enough improvements to justify me spending that money for an upgrade. So yeah, thank you so much, Bastian, for understanding and all these super chats coming from Bastian, from everyone else, it really helps me to push forward with my content to enable me to make more videos in the future. So thank you so much, Bastian. I really appreciate that. Julio says, greetings from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hey, Julio, how are you? Thanks for dropping by. Ken is saying, Robin, there was the point you made uh, over and over, Sally. I don't think OM Digital Solutions is listening. Olympus had a good lead in the mirrorless market and leading features, but they totally blew it. Yeah, I wish they were in the same position again. Uh, they come up with new wow features, wow products that they can like be the forefront and to show the way for everyone to follow, right? And be the leader again. Uh, they have done it once and I know that they can do it again. I, I just don't know what happened. Now, it seems like they've lost the way or they've lost the spark to fight. I don't know. I could be wrong. Shen Z says, is there a substantial improvement in the handheld high res mode? If there is, then I will buy it. I wouldn't know. Hey, and from the test from the ambassadors or other people, we don't see much. I think it's not 
so much of the mechanics or the use case improvement. It's more like we get 14-bit raw. That's it. Yeah, that's the only improvement there. And that was claimed officially by the OM Digital Solutions. I think by now the video is looking fine. It's not freezing anymore. So yeah, I, I disabled one of the settings and I hope the video stays okay. Because if not, I will have to either restart the computer and use a different capture device. So we'll just observe the video for now. So far it's working so good. Yeah, no problem whatsoever. Escomis says, good evening from Finland. Hey Escomis, how are you? I feel it's just rebranding with tweaks to get out from the Olympus brand. For me, the next camera is what I'm looking for that will tell us where OM system is going to. I hope you are right. I hope the ca next camera will be the WOW camera. Ron says, Thomas is always too technical. It's not the technical aspect that I am not happy about. It's that he gets some technical aspects wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sixtus Backmaster says, My Micro Photos dollars are now aimed at a G9 Mark II. That's a good decision. No way am I going to spend hundreds more on another OM1. The one I have is quite enough, and if the G9 Mark II does well, then my OM1 will be up for sale. Yeah. I think you you enjoy the G9 Mark II so far. All the reviews I've seen from microphone nerds, from, even from Jimmy Chang himself, from a lot of photographers out there, they are praising the G9 Mark II. It seems like it's the current wow camera, the best we can get uh, as a wow camera for micro four thirds. Mm. Andrew Banner says, how did Andrew Rouse get the camera? I have no idea. Rob Trek says, Hi Robin and everyone, joining late but excited to hear what you all think. Hey Rob, thank you so much. Uh, I don't know if you heard earlier at the start of the stream, I actually reminded everyone that uh, there's another round of uh, the gathering of Micro Four Thirds content creators at your channel. So it's a good time to remind if there's new people coming in. I'm just going to put this part two of Rob Trek's channel. There's... Uh, a uh, live meetup this coming Sunday. Uh, Malaysian time is 10 o'clock, so do check your local listing. Do go to Rob Trek's channel, make sure you enable the notification. And yeah, do join in this live stream. I think it'll be fun. Uh, my favorite content creators, Jimmy Chang from Red35 and Microphone Nerds, uh, Emily, both of them will be there. I'm excited to see them and hear what they have to say about photography, about camera in general. And I myself will be there in the commenting in the chat session. I want to appear on the video because I already appeared in a uh, previous stream. And for those of you who were there, thank you so much for joining. And this time I'll just be in the support, uh, in, the, in the chat, uh, chatting with everyone. So yeah, do see you guys this Sunday at Rob Tracks channel. I think it'll be fun. And, and, and I think Rob did such a fantastic job in the previous stream. Uh, he was the organizer. He got everyone together. He, it was a lot of hard work coordinating so many people. And everyone is from different time zones, different places to get everyone in one platform to just chat. I think he did a fantastic job hosting, asking questions and make sure everyone has a chance to speak. So thank you so much, Rob, for doing this. Uh, I really enjoyed myself in the stream. I've learned so much from everyone and from yourself as well, from the sharing. I think if you haven't watched the stream, you should definitely check it out it's on rob tracks channel so do check it out <laughs> ken says i seriously wonder what proportion of the camera buyers and photographers are wildlife nature photographers this group seems to be their target nowadays and it's also worrying because like canon does wildlife photography nikon does wildlife photography Sony also does wildlife photography. Everyone is doing wildlife. And for OM Digital Solutions to come in and fight, and I, I don't know, it's, it's, it seems like a losing battle to me. MPU says, hello to everyone. Hey, really nice to see you here. Thanks for dropping by. Hmm. Keith says, I have time disagree with you on ESL simply due to the thoroughness technically. He also went out and demonstrated the tracking autofocus features. I didn't hear or see the degree of detail in the others. Okay. Well, if you love him, if you enjoy his review, then yeah, I have nothing more to add. GMT Photography and Media says, This camera was just a pointless rebatch for legal reasons. Hopefully the, fu the future release are actually meaningful. <laughs> Panef Mark II, yeah. I think we could, we could use a Panef update right now that everyone's vintage cameras, retro design is all the rage. Ken is talking to Sixtus McMaster, you shoot more photos or videos? Yeah, you guys keep talking to each other. Um, 
Chuck says, it sounds like they are taking the pricing scheme from Sony. The A7 Mark V expected to be around $3,000. It's unsustainable. But then the price will just keep going higher and higher, right? That's just how things are. So I don't mind for the price to climb. I just wish that we get a lot more for what we are paying for. Getting the same resolution and getting practically the same dynamic range in high ISO, that is not inspiring confidence, especially if you compare it with what you can do with EMR Mark II, which was launched in 2016, that's like seven years ago, uh, eight years now, eight years ago, that, that's worrying, right? Curry, hey Curry. Curry says, hi Robin, hope you're having a great day. Thank you so much. It, the day has been great so far and with everyone here, it just gets better. So, so yeah, hope you're doing well as well. Corey is reminding everyone to hit the thumbs up button. Thank you so much. Jack Fatarfi says, in the UK, the new 150 to 600 comes in over 1,000 pounds, more than the full frame equivalent. I think I may move back to full frame at this rate. Yeah. The pricing is also, the strategy for the pricing on an OM Digital Solutions product is also questionable at this point. Like, they are asking a lot more for the OMR Mark II, but they are not giving us a lot more. And then the lens itself is also questionable. Like, why is it so expensive, right? I understand. Yeah, Corey says, I'm assuming if the large lens, the Oyam X may be something real in the near future. I don't know, hey. And yeah, we just have to wait and see if that, that happens. Wolfie says, Aspen did release it on its own channel. It was an initial thought. Oh, that's great then. I just wonder how come it was not recommended. That's strange. Like, YouTube usually is very spot on and very quick in finding all these uh, videos and grow them together and push. They want you to continue consuming the same topics, right? And the fact that I didn't get anything from Aspen, yeah, that's kind of weird. And it wasn't even picked up by a lot of other sites as well. Yeah. Fernando says, I was thinking about upgrading from my OM5 to the new OM1 Mark II, but hearing what I'm hearing, I think that I would upgrade to the OM1. Thank you, Robin. I sincerely appreciate your comments. No worries. I share what I can. And thanks. Thanks for, for saying that. Sixter says, I was talking to Ken Hong. You guys keep talking to each other. Awesome. Wolfie says, don't use home or recommended list on YouTube. Use your subscription category to get reliable updates from the people you follow. But then again, you're only stuck in that ecosystem, right? Let's say that uh, OMG Solutions has a new ambassador. Let's say they hire an awesome photographer doing OM1. The beautiful thing about YouTube is that YouTube will recommend similar topics, especially if it's a new video for you to watch. And whether you click or not, it's up to you. Like I don't click 99% of the recommendations, but if they recommend this, and, I, and if I see that, hey, there's this new photographer or the new ambassador talking about OM1, I would love to look at that review as well. But the fact that it's not recommending is worrying. That's, that's the thing that I was talking about. It's not so much of me asking people to look at the recommendations. All right. Uh, oh, let's see. Ron has uh, super chat. Thank you so much, Ron. I appreciate that. <laughs> and guys, like all these super chats and all these contributions from you guys, I really, really, really thank you guys so much. It's because of all this generosity from you guys, all the support and all the love that you guys are sharing that actually kept this channel going. You guys may not realize that. <laughs> all right, uh, let's continue on. Wolfie says, did my wish just broke the stream? <laughs> May, what, what did you wish for? Yeah. Corey says, video froze again. Well, it, it froze because I added a filter to the stream to, to change the color and everything. Now that I disabled the filter, it has been going on strong for the past 30, 35 minutes. So that's okay. The Narrowband channel, hey Benjamin, thanks for dropping by. I hope you're doing well. How are you, Benjamin? Uh, ben says, I was impressed with his daylight performance, but was disappointed that no extra features came with it. There was a, a pattern uh, filed by One Digital Solutions that they, ha they have this internal built-in camera astro tracker, right? Like, I really wish that's going to happen really, really soon. I hope that happens really, really soon. Sixers of Amazon says, if improving original OM1 autofocus requires more memory, give me a firmware update that eliminates the memory demands of features I don't ever use. A pick and choose update, I know. Right? It's not just memory, it's the processing capability as well. So I'm sure like maybe they put a new a quad core or a octa core processor to enable better processing capability, right? It's not just uh, memory itself. We have another super chat from Sixers Batmaster. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, I think this is also, uh, I want to take a pause here to thank everyone again one more time. I think uh, I appreciate you all being here. And I have just hit a 75,000 subscriber count. So thank you so much for everyone for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And of course, not just for you guys here, subscribing, watching and sharing and commenting and engaging with me live here. Uh, but also like a lot of you here are so generous in contributing to this super chat uh to the uh, buy me coffee or my paper contribution so or even some of you actually bought a lot of stuff from my affiliate links from amazon so i appreciate that as well or bnh uh every single contribution from you guys definitely enable me to do more videos improves my production quality and they definitely motivate me to go out and make more content shoot more for you guys right so thank you thank you thank you so much and yeah i'm, I'm excited to do a lot more I appreciate that, Sixus McMaster. Thank you so much. Uh, ben says, what makes the lens better than the Sigma will be the Sync IS. Yeah, I hope so too. I hope the Sync IS works really well. But then again, I also saw that like the effectiveness is not... Well, then again, I shouldn't be making this comment because, well, we all know that 150 to 600 is not a pro lens. So the effectiveness is not what we would expect coming from, say, the 150 to 400 pro lens or the 300 f4 pro lens right but hey yeah I, I don't know i haven't seen the lens i haven't tried it so i i shouldn't be making any uh, comment shunta hey nice to see you here i'm seeing the powerful robin from kyoto my honest feeling now is let's wait until the om5 with usbc terminal comes out thank you so much for tuning in very nice to see you here shunta Dave says, I can't get any Olympus in Canada. Maybe that's because they've been rebranded to OM Digital Solutions, right? They are an OM system now. Yeah. yeah. Andrew says, RAM in camera is very different from a RAM in computer. You can't conflate the two. Yeah, it's a different thing. Yeah. John Fellow says, Hey, Robin from the UK. I was disappointed to hear your negative comments on Thomas. I think it gives serious and not superficial insights on, on products. So here is the thing. Let me illustrate you where this um, negative comments come from. So I made a very valid uh, comment on the OM1's camera in my videos, right? I said that I was disappointed at a single autofocus performance, especially in low light, low contrast. And I've used the OM1 for dozens of shoots for my professional shoots. And in these shoots, there are situations where I miss shots, like critical shots that are delivered to my clients that I have to apologize for. In these situations, it's very it's always very consistent. Low light, low contrast, stage photography, for example, with smoke in the background. There are some critical people that I have to shoot with long lens that I miss shots because the autofocus didn't work. I tried all kinds of autofocus settings. I tried the continuous autofocus, tracking, I tried single autofocus, I tried all different kinds of uh, the, the autofocus sizes, the boxes, I tried everything, it just didn't work. So the first time I missed it, uh, the second time, what I did was I just took out my EM5 Mark III, bam, one try, I got the shot. Uh, so I made a com complaint in my video and uh, Thomas, being the technical expert, came back with a solution. Oh, I fixed the problem. I have solved this problem. It was not a problem in the first place. This complaint by this YouTuber, I don't understand what he's saying. And in his fix, he says that all you have to do is just magnify the part of the screen and you can immediately single autofocus. My goodness, that shows how you are not a photographer, like you don't have enough experience because if you have shot events before, if you've done wedding photography, if you've actually done real life shooting, you'll realize that something is happening on the spot. You only have a few seconds to respond. How then are you going to magnify the part and shoot? You're going to miss even more shots. And because like I had a valid complaint and I wasn't the only one complaining. If you look at the video, if you look at the comments, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other people saying that in low light, low contrast situations, the autofocus on the OM1 is performing worse than the EM1 Mark II. Like if I am paying for a new flagship camera, it's supposed to be better or at least it's the same with the previous camera. So for me, it's not so much of me complaining the camera is not good enough. For me, it's like I wasn't happy that the OM1 is taking a, a step backward. And Thomas just outright dismissed me. And worse, he came to my channel and said, Robin, if you don't like the OM1, 
why don't you just give it away? Why don't you just sell the camera? I'm like, how dare you? Like, seriously, someone donated the camera for me. I didn't buy the camera, right? Uh, I already said why I didn't buy the M1. It was not, um, it didn't have enough upgrades for me to justify buying the camera. So someone very generous, we just called the person Jay. He wants to remain anonymous. He sent me the camera all the way from the US. And as a photographer, I do have a lot of things to say. I just want to share. It's what I've been doing on this channel all this time. I have been really honest and I'm not going to change, right? I think you guys appreciate me being honest, sharing my genuine thoughts and experiences using the camera with you guys. Good or bad, I'll share 100% with you guys. And that's why I shared with the OM1, right? And there you go. Uh, someone... Thomas got triggered and said, well, Robin, if you hate the camera so much, why don't you just sell it off? Why don't you just give it away? I'm like, how dare you? <laughs> so yeah, that guy just lost my respect 100%. I'm sorry. I we going to see where I'm coming from, right? I think it's totally rude to ask a person to give out a camera. I didn't say that uh, I hated the OM-1. I'm just saying that it's not a wild camera and it has some problems that I actually encountered valid problems during my shoot and I thought that as a previous Olympus visionary as a previous ambassador it's my job to keep you guys informed because I am still shooting with micro four thirds and the reason why I'm complaining about all these things is because I do want them to get better I genuinely want them to succeed and for someone to come and say that nah this guy he doesn't know what he's talking about. I can just fix the problem by magnifying the part of the screen. And, and you know, like, you see something has, it's happening so fast, right? It'll slowly take your time, hit the magnify button, slowly magnify it, and then demagnify the button, half press the shutter button. I'm like, ha, huh? what kind of photographer? It just shows that you don't really know what you are talking about. Anyway, let's move on to the next, next comment. Kema says, hey Robin, my two cents. I don't see any improvement in dynamic range in this new OM version. Is this not on the wish list? Yeah, I don't see it either. I don't know. Hey, I wish I wish they will really improve it as well. Yeah. Keith says, uh, well, Easel's review is the best one hour can spend in trying to make a very important financial decision. I'd like to know why there seems to be such a visceral dislike. Well, I've just shared my comment. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. And he, well, he started throwing the stones first so i'm just defending myself here sixes backmaster says i use a friend's sony a6700 at my regular nightclub gig and got far more focused hits than i ever did with the om1 and olympus 40 to 150 f2.8 aps-c may be my future that's you see my my complaint here you guys see like why i miss shots i'm not the only one <laughs> Andrew Roberts says they had to rebrand only so lucky they made any improvements they didn't have to. Is price increase due to higher memory costs? Is that why they didn't include on the Mark 1? I, I don't know. And it's not my place to make assumptions. Like I don't know what the strategy is. And we don't really know if there is going to be no more for my upgrades for the OM1, right? Like my wish is that they will continue to support the current OM1 users and they'll release future updates. I don't know. We, we just can't assume things. Beyond says, hi from Denmark. First time user of our system, but love it. Awesome. Welcome to the system. Chuck says, it makes you wonder why Sigma didn't just make the 150 to 600. Maybe they have some agreement with OM Digital Solutions that we're not aware of. I have no idea. Things that's happening behind closed doors. We can just make assumptions. <laughs> Something says, any video improvement? Zero. <laughs> Jeff says, talking to Rob Trek, looking forward to Sunday. Same here. I'm looking forward to what everyone has to say and what our dear friend Thomas has to say as well. Ken says, as talking to Sixtus McMaster, I tested the Sony ZV-E10 with the 16 to 50 kit lens. For an entry-level camera, the continuous autofocus and face tracking is impressive. This is why I said the OM1's uh, or any OM Digital Solutions camera, the face detection, the human detection is actually falling behind competition is not just behind Sony, but it's also behind Canon. If you have used Canon cameras, you understand. The newer ones, of course. Christine says, I was very much on board with Olympus on systems. I feel I have, uh, they have lost your way. Few improvements, the Sigma lens, extortionate price. 
Same with the 918 re-release, harsh words, milking. Yeah, maybe they're just milking. I don't know. At this point, it's very hard to gauge or to predict what they are doing. But it does seem that the OMR Mark II has very too few improvements to justify the price hike, right? Yeah. Jared Mitchell says, off topic from the OM1 discussion, I'm looking to get the Micro Four Thirds and looking at EM1. Is the Mark III worth the extra cost over the Mark II? Depends on what you are doing. Uh, the Mark III does have a few improvements, especially in the video autofocus, uh, video shooting. I think the uh, image stabilization is also improved. Uh, but they are both very similar camera. But one thing that I really like about the EM1 Mark III is that you can use the USB-C to charge and have power delivery. So if I'm using the camera as a webcam, like what I'm using the OM1 is for now, I can just plug in the USB-C cable into the camera and it will, inst it will provide infinite power. I don't have to worry about changing batteries, right? So I can shoot infinite, or I can just leave the camera on without thinking about the battery running out. Yeah, there are a few other uh, changes there and here, but they are basically the same camera. I'm currently using EMR Mark II as my main workhorse. Like if I were to shoot for jobs, EMR Mark II is my main camera. So it's definitely good enough. Yeah. Ron says, I was a wedding foy. What is wedding foy? Uh, Michael says, hello, Robin. Hey, Michael, how are you? Do you think that the autofocus upgrade will come also for the OM1 Mark I in a few months? I don't know. It's very hard to predict. And I wish that they don't abandon the OM1 users. I wish they continue to give us updates and improve, especially fix some of the bugs, improve the single autofocus performance, and maybe update some new features like the live graduation, and it will be great to have in the OM1. Mm. Yeah. Yep, I love the EMR Mark II, definitely. Angelo, play for one. Hey, really nice to see you. Hello from Netherlands. Hello. Uh, glad that you are dropping by. Time check. It is already midnight. I'm going to drink more water. Got to remind myself to stay hydrated. There are still more than 200 people here alive. I think we have fixed the video issue. It's not freezing anymore. Sorry about that earlier. I'm going to drink more water and finish my coffee. Hmm. Yeah. <sighs> More coffee. Hmm. All right, just a quick summary on what everyone is talking about uh, up to this point. I think generally we are a little bit disappointed that uh, it feels like the OMR Mark II is a same camera as OM1, but with slight updates and firmware improvements, right? But I disagree because I think some of the improvements cannot be made with just firmware. But yes, I agree that uh, the upgrades are too few. And I do want to see more improvements in the OMR Mark II, especially in terms of new sensor, uh, autofocus performance, and maybe some wow features, right? That'll be awesome. But yeah, it feels like they're asking a lot, but they're not giving enough. That's the general understanding or what everyone's agreeing at this point. Kojat says, I bought the Mark II a month ago because I feel that Mark III does not bring much improvement for the price. All right, how is the Mark II so far? You've been using it for a month, right? I think you have some, uh, some thoughts. I think people will appreciate hearing from you. Fiveway says, Robin, I just bought this camera. Which camera? The OM1 Mark II? Is it available already? Wow. Ron says, off topic, I was a wedding photographer in the Netherlands for five years. The regular amount you can charge here is between £1,000 and £2,000. And it means including a printed big photo book. Yeah. And yeah, that's a lot. That's about 6000 to 12000 ringgit. You are charging like three times or five times more than what we are charging here in Malaysia. Hmm. Fiveway says, oh no, I, I'm sorry, I didn't bought the EMR Mark II, my mistake. Camera hasn't delivered, but anticipating it's arriving. All right, congratulations on the purchase. And I think once the camera comes, you'll really love the EMR Mark II. Gusharan says, uh, talking to Hesha Maro, you're most welcome to India. If you visit Northern India, especially Chadigat, I would please welcome a fellow Olympus user. That's awesome. Wufi says, OM1 on used market has fallen from 1,008 to 2,000 euro to 1,000 to 2,005 euro from August last year to yesterday. It's a good time to buy that instead of OM1 Mark II. I was lucky to get it at 1,005 in October. Congratulations. I hope you're enjoying your camera. Peter Gray. Hey, Peter. How are you? Very nice to see you. Peter has an awesome YouTube channel as well. If you guys don't know who Peter is, do check out his channel. Uh, he makes some really cool content. 
Fido says, Hi Robin, just wanted to express I appreciate your work and sending a big hello. Hey there, and thank you so much for dropping by. Uh, Great Murphy says, Hey Robin, love your passion, insights, and beautiful images. Huge congrats on reaching 75k. Thank you so much, Greg, and thanks for dropping by. Very nice to see you here. Hmm. Henning says, so disappointing to hear all your assessment. I was hoping for a good review and I really wanted to step into Olympus. I was so keen on the live composite feature. I changed my mind at least for now. Yeah, I'm just being honest here. Hey, I'm not here to please anyone. I'm not here to sell anything. I'm a photographer and you are a photographer as well. So I do want to share my opinion as genuinely, as honestly as I can. Right, we have another super chat, and this time is from Malkas. Thank you so much, Malkas. Malkas says, "Time to pay back Matty and get him a coffee when he's back from down under." And I seem to take you for coffee last time. Oh, there was you. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, we we buy each other coffee all the time, and we will definitely meet up again very very soon. I think it's end of March. Matty Sulanto will be in Malaysia, and I can't wait to go out on the streets and make content with him again. I learned so much from Matty Sulanto. He's a no bullshit guy. He's straight to the point, and yeah, I love that about him, and he shares his honest opinion, and I've learned, so, he's so generous in sharing. I've learned so much. I've grown so much as a photographer being with him, being his friend, right? So yeah, uh, definitely and thank you so much for for the coffee and uh yeah we will definitely have a great coffee and we will ping you once we have had the coffee angelo says my impression of the release of Omar mark 2 is that the small increase in feature and high increase in price does not match also they need nothing on the video part yeah that's the general consensus here as well right like they're asking for more in terms of price but they're not giving enough and then there's no improvement in video features which is a little bit disappointing a lot of people are expecting at least uh, 4k 120 at this point because we get that from the g9 mark ii terry says talking to roger oh, it's not terry saying roger hans in the uk also reviewed the new 100 to 50 to 600 i was talking about om1 mark ii uh, we are not talking about 150 to 600 in this uh particular stream yeah because i am not a long lens user so i can't comment so much on the super telephoto lens i obviously don't shoot wildlife and i don't shoot birds so yeah i try to stay on my territory like I'm, I'm good at certain things that i do but i also admit that i am not good at everything i think as a photographer you need to understand your limitations and yeah i am definitely not qualified to comment on the 150 to 600 same reason why i have not commented on the 150 to 600 uh sorry 150 to 400 lens before right yeah, we have another super chat. Wow, you guys are generous today. Colin, thank you so much, Colin, for the super chat. Uh, Colin says, thank you, Robin, for the great chat. No worries. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy that everyone is here. And I'm, I'm, I'm very, very thankful for all these contributions from you guys. You guys are super, super generous. And yeah, you guys definitely enable me to do more and uh, definitely inspire me to want to go out and make more content. And I have a long list of contents I want to make. I have some made already and I can't wait to share with you guys Jared says I uh, was talking to Kojak you guys keep talking to each other Anastas hey Anastas how are you joining a little bit late no worries man you just do whatever you need to do hi Robin nice to see you nice to see you too thanks for dropping by yeah Jack says if I remember correctly one of your grads with OM1 was no dual touch screen not dual touch multi-touch and I'm wondering if that has been since changed for the Mark II. Nah, they didn't mention anything about that. None of the ambassadors mentioned that as well. Yeah, Angelo says, Thomas is a salesman and may be paid by OM System. Even Tony Notrap said that he was approached by OM Systems. Yeah. I wouldn't make assumptions about Thomas, whether he's a salesperson or not, whether he's being paid by OM System or not. Uh, we don't know. He didn't do any disclaimer or anything. Let's, let's not make assumptions about people uh, my beef with him is just that he was really rude he asked me to just throw away my om1 i'm like who are you to tell me to do that with my camera especially someone actually sent me the camera it was a gift i may have complaints about the om1 but you have no right to ask me to throw the camera away right <laughs> i think that's just a step too far oh, bastion oh my goodness <laughs> But it says, Robin, I would like to try out Olympus colors for photos on three Panasonic bodies. Do you see significant difference between EM1 Mark II, EM5 Mark II, and EM5 Mark III? I think they all have the same color profile or very, very similar. The EM1 Mark II and the EM5 Mark III are 100% the same. 
The EM5 Mark II, the previous one, has slight difference, just a slight difference, but they are all almost the same. Yeah, do, do give it a try, hey, I think, uh, depends on which Panasonic bodies that you own, but I don't think the colors are drastically different because they're all within the Micro Four Thirds setup anyway. But yeah, do give it a try. If I were to recommend something, I would definitely push for the EM1 Mark II because it's my favorite now. <laughs> yeah. Animal Infotainment says, uh, Thomas is not very honest. He often spreads false equivalencies like doubling the focal length, but not doubling the aperture. He also made a video about image quality, which was filled with inaccurate something. Yeah, I also, I've watched quite a few of his videos. I constantly disagree with a lot of the things that he says. I don't want to pick every single detail. Like that would be... Uh, it seems like a very evil thing for me to do. Let's just say that I, as a content creator, as a photographer, there are many things that he believes in that he spreads on his channel. I just disagree with. Yeah. Carl Richard says, uh, as I'm not really a video guy, I'm thinking of snapping up a reduced secondhand Nikon D850. I do like optical viewfinders. Hey, get it? Hey, um, I, I feel that Nikon D850 is like one of the best DSLRs ever made. If I can find one in the great price, I would net one as well. Not so much of using it for jobs, of course not now, now the price is still very high, like maybe five years later or eight years down the road, you can find one in a really, really, really good price. I don't mind getting one myself as a collection, right? Or just see what the fuzz is all about. It's like really one of the game changer when it comes to DSLR cameras. Jared says, is talking to Kojak. No worries, you guys keep talking to each other. Jack says, I'm very early into my photography journey. I've been considering getting an OM one, especially now since they are available more cheaply, but I'm seriously considering if it makes sense to jump ship. What are you jumping from? Um, I always say that use what you have. You don't have to change systems. You don't have to upgrade. You don't have to jump ship. Use what you have. Uh, whatever you have is more than good enough. And photography is a lot more than gear, right? There are many things you can do as a photographer to improve. You can learn to see things differently. You can learn, you can read more, you can travel more, and then you can learn to, to improve your composition, your framing. You can learn about storytelling. Uh, important thing is curation, how to curate your photographs, right? Uh, all these things can definitely improve or lighting technique. Uh, all these things can definitely push you to be a better photographer rather than upgrading gear. Eric says, Robin, you cry me out when you get angry. You are the nicest but a built photographer I watch. I just imagine you saying, let's do this and backhand this on to another time. Now, I, I, I don't condone violence, right? Uh, but I am human. There are things that I disagree with, like some things, and especially when it comes to technical things, I am an engineer. Oh, I was an engineer. I'm a qualified engineer. I have a civil engineering degree. So there are things that are black and white. If it's right, it's right. If it's wrong, it's wrong. You can't twist facts, especially when it comes to technical arguments, right? So yeah, I, I see things as they are. But yeah, thanks, thanks for that, Eric. I appreciate you. Jared says, oh, you guys are talking to each other. No worries. Uh, Daniel says, thanks for this chat, Robin. No worries. Thanks for being here, Daniel. I appreciate you. Uh, Anasta says, uh, Robin, there is a video improvement. They have a vertical video now. and It's working like a webcam. Yeah, vertical video is hardly an improvement. Hey, Anastas, we are talking about like we want 4K 120 uh, frames per second. We want like better Kodak. We want improvement in color. We want improvement in bit rate. You know, we want like to do like open gate, for example. We don't have that in OM camera, which is like a huge thing a lot of other cameras can do, but the OM system camera cannot do yet. So it's like a list of features that uh, G9 Mark II has that made it such a compelling camera or GH6 that uh, the current OM1 or the OM1 Mark II is still lacking. Yeah. Five Ways says that Sigma lens is heavier than the full frame version and very expensive. Yeah, I know, right? I can't believe that it's more expensive than full frame version. And here we are talking about like micro four thirds, you know, oh, full frame lenses are too expensive and suddenly like, yeah, why is full frame lens 
not so expensive anymore. <laughs> Alex says, Robin, hi, your smile is super, bro. Thank you so much. I think we all can smile a little bit more. <laughs> Kojas says, he's talking to Jared in this case, Olympus. You guys keep talking to each other because I have a long, normally I'll read all the comments, but like I am behind in these comments. I need to catch up. So you guys keep talking to each other. Anasa says, why they don't add an option to service OM1 and add RAM or buffer as a paid upgrade? Nikon did that like a couple of years ago. I don't know maybe lack of resources they are a very small company like perhaps the smallest company now OM Digital Solutions so they may not have the capability to roll out worldwide like they are non-existent in a lot of countries at this point right yeah Kojak says uh, Olympus 12 to 40 Pro is one of Robin's favorites yeah it is one of my favorites and I love Primes as well I actually shoot with Primes more uh, the total 40 is just a more practical option if I were to do jobs, right? It's easier. Hmm. Anasa says, I think this update was forced because of the name change and just use it to put some minor things. I, I understand why they have to change the name because they may not have the, the uh, what you call that, the permission to use the, the Olympus brand anymore. But at the same time, why don't we get more improvements? It doesn't hurt to give us more, right? Like, I also I, I don't disagree with the price. I understand that every single camera release, the price will just get higher and higher. Inflation, price high is normal. But by asking for more, we are selling at a higher price, we do get to ask for more, right? Like why don't you give us better improvements, like better autofocus or you know, like new image sensor? That will be really a big welcome at this point. Pinnacle Pete says, It seems like OM Solutions realized that OM1 Mark II isn't the wild camera people expected, so that's why they didn't loan it out to independent reviewers. They didn't want bad press. That makes them look worse, right? Like, intentionally not giving your cameras to or their products to the press or the media. It just shows that you have something to hide. That's, that puts you in, in even a worse position. Daniel says, really enjoyed shooting with the EM1 Mark II, good value for money. Have been very disappointed generally with OM systems, doesn't seem good value for the money over what I have now. I agree. So like, even now, I still use the EM1 Mark II for my jobs. And Andrew Banner says, my everyday camera is the EM1 Mark II. It gets very well used and does everything I need to. Nothing in the OM lineup so far will make me part with more money. Sadly, more Model is getting dodgy. Oh no! Uh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, nothing lasts forever. Hey, things do break apart at some point, right? Kojak says, Robin, OM D EM1 is a really great camera. I agree. My previous EM10 and IBIS in EM OM1 Mark II is nothing sort of uh, miraculous. Great controls over ergonomics. Speed quality is great. Uh, Use lenses are cheap. Yeah. Don't disagree with you there. Uh, Squadda says, I am not a pro shooter. My main cameras are Lumix G100, which I mostly use to scan negatives, uh, and my 12-year-old EPL3, which I use most. I love hearing about new tech, but I don't chase it. That's, that's a great principle to have. And after all, photography is not about chasing the latest camera. Uh, if you are doing photography as a hobby, then that's the best because you shoot for yourself. You're not there to please anyone. You do whatever you want. You have creative freedom. I think that's the best thing that can happen to any photographer. You decide what you want to do, right? But having said that, like I do want a future for micro four thirds. Like, I do want OM Digital Solutions to survive. And I the only way for them to do that is to have at least some progress and to show that they are serious about the game and then they release a the products that can wow us, right? So I do want them to have a future. That's why we are having these streams. Anastas says, I'm currently EM1 Mark II and 1 1 user shooting mostly events. When I use the two cameras at the same time, I literally hate the EM1 Mark II way slower, hard to navigate the AF. Oh, that's not true. I find the EM1 Mark II to be way faster than OM1 and way easier to navigate the autofocus. The OM1, I have missed a lot of shots, uh, which I have to apologize to my clients multiple times. And I demonstrated how I missed the shots in three videos. I made three videos to talk about that. Kojat says, one more thing. We all want our cameras to be sexy and Olympus design is so much more sexy than OM systems, especially around the shutter. Yeah, I know, right? We want, we want our cameras to be beautiful as well because we spend a lot of money buying the camera. It's an investment and we use the camera camera every day, it well, depends on how often you use. I use my cameras almost every day. So if I look at something every day, I want it to look beautiful as well. Mm. 
Edgar Teal says, so disappointed with the OM Mark II, but the EM5 Mark III and the OM5 are still the best entry of the Micro Four Thirds. Yeah, I agree. EM5 Mark III and the OM5 are really awesome. Rob Track says, I think the Olympus Mark II series, EM10, EM1, EM5 are the pinnacle of innovation, price, and quality. I don't disagree with you, Rob. Yeah, I think EM10 Mark II is really awesome. And I don't know why they take away so many things to EM10 Mark III. I think the EM1 Mark II is like a huge jump over the EM1 original. And then I don't know why, like the, the EM1 Mark III is just like not much, not too much upgrade. And then yeah, the EM5 Mark II, we have some new things like the high resolution shot. They have like new video features. It's really cool, right? Yeah, I think all these Mark II versions are really awesome. You're right there. And Angelo Play for One says stack sensors are expensive and due to the low volume of sales of OM cameras, they will use this for many generations before we recuperate their investment. Yeah, I hope that's not true. <laughs> I do want to see some improvements in the image quality. Yeah. Andrew Roberts says, I remember how much we love our OM1s last week. Maybe Etsy will start selling Mark II badges so we can happy again and not feel inferior how we come across the other guy who has a new thing. <laughs> I have no issue using older cameras. Hey, I'm currently still shooting with EM1 Mark II. I think it's a better camera than the OM1. Timothy says, Hi Robin from Washington DC. I tried the G9 Mark II and returned it because the buffer took too long to clear. My OM1 has enough buffer for my birding needs. Keep up the good work. No worries. I think when people buy the G9 Mark II, it's also for the video features. It has some video features that unfortunately the OM1 and OM1 Mark II lack. And notably the 4K120. I mean, if you are serious about content creating and you want a hybrid camera, right? And a lot of things that the OM1 can do, the G9 Mark II can also do but having said that like if you compare side by side the image quality i think it's from chris and jordan from petapixel they have also demonstrated that the om1 or the even em1 mark ii the older cameras in terms of dynamic range the lower isos like iso 200 to 800 these cameras perform better than g9 mark ii surprisingly and to me that's very important because i shoot almost everything below iso 1600 and that's due to the architecture of the g9 mark ii sensor it has dual gain so after a certain iso it changes the gain so you do suffer some image quality loss this compromise there and here but yeah overall it's, it's not like i'm not saying that g9 mark ii is like the best camera ever but it does have some quirks and some limitations as well yeah Henning says, oh no, I'm not disappointed by you. I'm glad and thankful for your honest opinion on the camera. I'm disappointed by OM systems. Could you recommend another camera for a live composite feature? Uh, well, EM1 Mark II, EM1 Mark III, they all have live composite. If you want to go lower, you don't have to spend so much money. I think the older EM5 Mark II, EM5 Mark III, they also have live composite features. All right. Right. Andrew Roberts says, reminds me of how unfa unhappy iPhone users always were when the improved S versions came out. Apple was ripping them off by not adding the new features as a software update. Yeah. Andrew says, the huge heavy lens, 150-600 is really disappointing. I was hoping for a 50-200. to 200. Yeah, they haven't released the lens yet. Hey, and still in the roadmap. So hopefully something is coming. Like, let's, let's not give up on them yet. Yeah, we don't know how they plan with the timetable or the release of the strategy. It's hard to tell. Andrew Roberts says, I agree on the lens. I don't like repurposed full frame lenses due to size and weight compromise. Yeah, I know, right? Like, okay, not, I, I don't want to talk so much about 150 to 600 here because I'm not an expert in optics and I don't use long lenses for wildlife. But in the early, I just want to make a brief comment here. In the earlier days of Olympus, they have made a lot of breakthroughs when it comes to optics. They were the first to introduce the telecentric optical design, which is like copied by everyone now, right? They make the lens slightly bigger, cover a larger image circle, so that the light hits the sensor more perpendicularly and the image is more optimized, right? That was their design. And then they also have like introduced new technology like dual super spherical lenses, for example, in the ultra wide angle to the 918, which is copied by everyone else, like Canon has them, Nikon, Fuji. In terms of optics, in terms of lens technology, Olympus was second to none. There was a time where they were at the forefront. They were like, we know lenses, we make the best lenses. And these days are like, what? You are rebadging someone else's lenses? Like what, what happened to all this lens technology? Like. 
has R&D stopped at some point? Like, I, I don't get it. Like, again, there's a lot of things that I don't know. There's, because I'm no longer associated with Olympus. I haven't been connected to them for years. So yeah, it seems a little bit disappointing at this point, right? Like, it's a Sigma lens. It's large and heavy. We have another super chat. And this time it's from Luke. Hi, Luke. Thank you so much for the super chat. Luke says, Hi, Robin. I have an EM5 Mark III, but I may shoot ski photography. Not the autofocus will be enough. Does the EM1 Mark III have much autofocus improvement. I feel that the EM1 Mark III and the EM5 Mark III, the autofocus is about the same. I don't think it's drastically different unless you have, uh, I think the OM1 has a different autofocus algorithm in terms of continuous tracking. So, but I will feel that EM1 Mark III is more powerful. The processing is faster, the buffer is better, and the camera overall just feels more responsive than EM5 Mark III because the EM1 Mark III is designed for professional use. That's all I can comment, right? But in terms of efficiency, when it comes to continuous autofocus, I don't think that it is that, it's better, it's definitely better, but not that much better than the EM5 Mark III. Yeah, that's my honest comment. Andrew says, it seems Panasonic is making headway here. Yeah, I know, right? It seems like they are making uh, headway. Jack says, maybe we can get a comparison video on the EM1 Mark II and the OM1 with both you and Thomas sometime in the future to settle this debate. It's not a debate. And I'm not interested in talking to him because I disagree with too many things. And if we start talking, I don't think it will head into a healthy direction because he clearly disagrees with me by the way he talks and making his videos, right? Yeah, Jack says, I have a Lumix GX9 with the 232 kit. Awesome combination. I'm unsure whether to invest fully into Micro Four Thirds, especially since this announcement, or to switch to APS-C or full frame. You can have more than one system, right? You can keep the GX9 and a kit lens as one system, a portable system. You can invest in a full frame camera for other purposes. A lot of people do that, yeah. Jeff says, hey, Robin, you should invite Thomas on your stream. It will be way entertaining. At this point, I don't intend to invite anyone on my stream. <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys noticed. I'm having trouble keeping up with the comments. Like, I am 20, 25 comments behind. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to talk to you guys because the reason I'm having this live stream is so that I can engage with you guys. You guys can ask me questions. You guys can talk. You guys can comment and I can answer and speak with you guys, right? Because I release new videos every week and I you guys comment on the video. I reply to as many comments, but I have like more than 300 videos on my channel now and people still comment on the older videos. I get like hundreds and thousands of comments every day. I just cannot keep up with these comments. So the only way for me to at least uh, communicate with you guys is here, this weekly stream, so that you guys can come in and I can chat with you guys and we can have like a healthy conversation here, right? It seems like I'm a real person uh, talking and you guys being here, I appreciate you guys so much because if not, I'll just be making videos talking to myself. So, you know, it works both ways, right? So at this point, I don't intend to have anyone on my stream because I'm having trouble keeping up with the comments here. Alexander says, no, we are not impressed. It's just a rebatch. Micro Four Thirds is dying. No new tech, new mattresses. Uh, they lost video for IPS and even full frame. Yeah. But I still hope that they can catch up. I still have hope because it was, there was once they were leading. They were at the forefront uh, in the industry. And I think they can do it again. It's just that it's a lot more difficult now. And it will take for OMG Solutions and Panasonic to to really sit down and work together and really put their heart together. Oops, our screen is froze again. Yeah, and, and really, really try to, to, to sort things out. Okay, let's just fix this. Oh no, we are not coming back. Let's try again. Are we back? I think we are back. <laughs> I think that's a sign for me to stop my stream. Hey, something is overheating somewhere, whether it's my computer or the camera or something, I don't know, or the capture card. I think the capture card runs really, really hot. But yeah, I'm just gonna run through a few more comments and we're gonna call it a night. I've been live streaming for more than, uh, 
two and a half hours already. So a few more comments here. Hey, we have a super chat again uh, from Jack. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate all the entertainment and advice. No worries, Jack. I appreciate you being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. All right, a few more comments and we are off. Anasta says, Robin, my comment about adding vertical video was sarcastic because they present it as an improvement in official videos. I know, right? Yeah, it's kind of sad. We, we do want more than just that. Uh, Chi Yong Cheng says, it's some, somehow a shame for the same processor yet could not provide same feature from the OM1 to the OM2. Yeah. Well, to be fair, like we don't know if there's not going to be an upgrade, uh, firmware update. Let's just not make assumptions. Let's just wait and see what how things go. Anasa says, I'm afraid there is no new stack sensor from Sony or other company that can be used with this tempo. Probably a new sensor will be released after five years. But there are some sensors. Uh, if you look at the patterns and what Sony is releasing, it's just that they are not being adopted by OMG Solutions and, um, and Panasonic. There's like a 48 megapixel sensor somewhere. I don't know. Alexander says Nikon Canon APS-C for the same price is more attractive now if you have a full frame perspective in system. Yes, I am not disagreeing with that. <laughs> That's why I've been trying so hard to, to comment here and hopefully someone listens. And yeah, Micro Four Thirds, I always have a soft spot for Micro Four Thirds and I do want them to survive. C-Line says, uh, could the jump in price of the 150 century because of inflation or perhaps lack of economies of scale? Just, I don't know, milking hardcore wildlife photographers. I don't know. It's all assumptions here. <laughs> Zoltan, you're still here. Thank you so much. Alexander says, there will be no new Micro Four Thirds matrices or stack sensor. Yeah, we'll never know. Yeah. Just no need that Sony produce one inch, APS-C and full frame. Yeah. All right. Uh, I am going to stop my stream here. Uh, I'm so sorry that the stream froze multiple times uh, over the past, I don't know, two and a half hours. I think one of the main issue was because I applied some filters, so that took a few additional steps of processing. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, hopefully the next stream, it'll be better. If you guys are still here, there is no live stream next week. I am flying home to Kuching uh, next Monday. I'll be home for about two weeks. So next week, there's no stream. The following week, I'll be back to Kuala Lumpur and I'll continue with the stream. So I'm taking one week break from live streaming. But you guys have been awesome. I appreciate all of you being here. And thanks for sharing your thoughts. I enjoy reading everyone's comments. And there's some really good comments there and here. Some, I do learn a lot from you guys. So thank you so much for being here. I really appreci appreciate that. And also, also I I appreciate a lot of these super chats or contributions to the um, buy me coffee or uh, paper contributions. Thank you so much for that. You guys kept me going. You guys kept me afloat and definitely enabled me to make more videos in the future. And yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this live stream and definitely I'll be doing weekly live streams after the one week break from next week. I'll come back. We'll talk about more. We'll talk about the 150 to 600 lands. We'll talk about more things in the future about the roadmap from digital solutions or other stuff in photography in general i'll definitely have a lot of uh, photography topics to share i want to share a lot of my photographs about how to improve yourself as a photographer i want to share my experience as a photographer and of course we want to talk more than just about cameras and lenses right <clears throat> photography is more about just gear and i can't wait to share with you guys on that so i appreciate all of you being here and i can't wait to see you guys again in the next stream and until then please go out and take more photographs Bye bye